Okay, I will now call the rule of uh, community panel regular meeting of council, July, uh, January 7th, <coughs> January? February 7th, January. 2023. Uh, can I get an uh, approval of the agenda with the additions of 12B correspondence from the Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure, RE Transportation Concerns, and 17I Disposal of Office Furniture? I will move to approve the agenda with the following additions 12B correspondence from the Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure. Retransportation concerns in 17I. Is it there? Disposable yeah. of office furniture. I'll second. Okay, any questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those contrary minded? Motion carried. Thank you. All righty. Uh, let's see. Adoption of the minutes from uh, January 17th. Did everybody get a copy of the minutes? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Any errors or omissions? Yeah. Yes. Just on um, six reports, fire department, um, the first <coughs> sentence, the, it just said the same month, the month of December. Oh, okay. Same day. Oh, okay. Anything else? Okay, can I, I get a motion to approve uh, the minutes for January 17th, 2023? I move to adopt the, min the minutes of January 17th, 2020, 2023, regular meeting of council. All right, any questions? Okay, got a mover and a second. Are any questions? Okay, all those in favor of approving the minutes, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, we're moving on to item four, public input inquiries. Do we have anybody tonight from the public for some input? You know, you guys all know me as Brendan English. I have been 74 summers at uh, Campbell. I'm just going to read from my notes. Usually I fly off the cuff, but not tonight. I wish to address the council as a whole, not individuals. I've paid attention to what happens here in council chamber, chambers, but also what's occurring on sidebar communications and closed meetings. Frankly, I'm really frustrated and I'm appalled. What I feel I've witnessed is a basic desire to railroad and shut down communications with people who do not agree with particular agendas. It reminds me of high school all over again. I feel the productivity of council has been stunted by egos and hurt feelings. Committees have been dismantled that worked well for the constituents and what we wanted and envisioned for our home community. I want to be clear, I'm not chastising any one person. I'm not bullying anybody and I'm not harassing anybody. It is my understanding that there have been times where my name has come up and my reputation has been discussed amongst counselors and staff in a negative manner. And correct me if I'm wrong about that, because I don't want to ever falsely accuse somebody of saying a disparaging remark about me that didn't actually occur or that a needless file of a constituent was developed. This council, as far as many residents are concerned, and in my humble opinion, is dysfunctional and toxic. I feel that some of the behaviors have created distrust, it's inflamed an unhealthy situation and has led to a lot of gossip in the community and the development of camps. Most people in Hanwell, while we want is just a peaceful, safe environment to raise our families, to develop friendships and welcome newcomers. That's all we want. We want access to our resources that we pay taxes for and occasionally some of us enjoy helping out on communities and in doing activities with the community. From my perspective, the battle of egos that have occurred here has changed the atmosphere in Anwell. I've been here 31 year plus years, how many years? 1989, 33, long time. Good people who are here have been bullied in this council chambers and outside of the council chambers. Good people are demoralized. And when the rest of the community stands up and we take notice of it, I personally, get the feeling, I don't know about anybody else sitting here, I get the feeling that the ranks are pulled in and things become secretive. This is no way to live. I don't live my life like that. I'm an honest person. This is no way to lead. I never led like that. I can suggest that any frivolous accusations towards others must stop. These weekly codes of conduct, stop. Give the man a break. We get it. You're not happy with them. But that's no reason to destroy a man. There's no reason to destroy another woman. I wouldn't do that to somebody. 
you know, it takes two to battle. And I personally have a lot on my plate. I have a four-year-old at home with autism. <coughs> and frankly, he throws fewer temper tantrums. And I can actually get him under control and wrangled in faster than I can you guys. In Hanwell, we just want, this is all we want, openness, fairness, <coughs> transparency, and accountability. That's what I want. That's all I ask for. Frankly, from what I've seen, we're not meeting on those benchmarks. We're not getting them at all. We're all tired of it. I'm tired of seeing what appears to be a council trying to find a way to inflame or aggravate a situation or a person. I don't know if anyone else in this room shares that opinion. I don't meet with them. A lot of people think I'm meeting with people. I'm not. I've got a four-year-old at home. I'm raising. I'm 57 years old. I'm raising a four-year-old who has autism, who lays on the floor and kicks his feet. It might beat me up, too. Depends on this day. So I've got a lot on my plate, too. I'm also tired of witnessing people exaggerate situations what appears to be a, either a personal agenda or a vendetta. And I'm extremely tired when someone treats others rudely. And I have seen a few others in these counselors in here, because I've been to quite a few of these meetings, behave rudely towards another one. And that they don't get a code of conduct for that. When someone is passionate about a topic, you don't put, don't put them in the corner. Work with them. Because you're going to improve the community by working with people with diverse opinions and attitudes and ideas. Just because someone has a different opinion or viewpoint doesn't make them wrong or unwanted. I feel some people feel unwanted in this room. It breaks my heart. I want to remind each and every one of you that you got here because of a democratic process. Public confidence needs to be restored in Hanwell for the residents, if not your committee as well, as your council. It's my recommendation from my experience that you either need a mediator to work through your issues or you need to hire a consultant who will help you develop greater communication strategies that will prevent disharmony, prevent codes of conduct, and prevent people from feeling like they're outsiders looking in. And that's all I've got to say because I'm freaking done. Come on, man. We're walking. Bad enough. Okay, moving on. Any disclosures, Council? I don't think we used to ten minutes. Somebody else's. Oh. Oh. Somebody else. Says, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Come right up. Yeah. I'll stand up at the imaginary podium. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I so, don't. That's all right. I don't. I don't need one. It's just. Yeah. It's no good. So, uh, um, so this is just address the mayor, council, and the executive of the of the office here. Uh, my name is Norm Couturier. I live at 17 Eagle Ridge Court in Hanwell. I'm a 12-year Hanwell resident, 30-year uh, owner of multiple businesses in Fredericton and an advocate for a transparent and responsible government. Prior to December 2022, I became aware of 26 code of conduct violations filed against Councillor Pat Septon, along with sanctions issued by the clerk's office. As a concerned resident of the community, I've been investigating the issues, violations, and sanctions to understand the root cause. Based on information that I have received, I raised a concern about the proper process not being followed in issuing these violations and associated sanctions to Councillor Septon. I submitted a letter to record during council meeting in December 2021, 2022, related to the aforementioned. I also submitted to the clerk at the time, under separate cover, a request for information outlining the independent investigation performed or the reasoning for not requiring independent investigation for each of the 26 violations. I received a response from the CAO on January 25, 2023. In this letter, I was informed that there are no documents in existence <coughs> to support the 26 violations and associated sanctions, that an independent investigation was not performed, and that an informal complaint process was used, not a formal process, to justify the sanctions issue. I was also informed that only 18 of the 26 violations were agreed to by council. Therefore, from this point forward, my continuing investigation will only deal with the remaining 18 violations and associated sanctions. I was informed that, quote, neither our bylaw or our policy states that sanctions and consequences can only occur if a formal complaint is brought forward, close quote. This tells me that, according to our current policy, an informal complaint can be filed by the clerk's office against the counselor 
adjudicated also by the clerk's office, and that formal sanctions can then be issued to the counselor without independent review. This is a substantial flaw in the current policy, which enables an egregious abuse of bias sanctioning without providing appropriate defense or objective third-party review for the accused. This policy issue is an independent and separate matter, which I will be taking up with counsel separately. I was informed also <coughs> that a motion was made by counsel in December that a third party would be hired to investigate and that the council will be releasing the report to the public once it has been delivered. I will submit to the clerk's office an official request for confirmation that the third party investigator has been or is being hired to independently investigate the 18 violations and associated sanctions and an estimated date as to when the report will be delivered to the clerk's office and made available to the public as stated. As a citizen, I am happy to see that the office has taken a positive and objective step forward by hiring an independent party to investigate the 18 violations and associated sanctions. I was also provided a statement by the CAO referencing, quote, many verbal complaints from staff and members of council regarding council reception's unprofessional social media posts, accusatory comments towards our school's principal, releasing confidential information, stating information that was not correct, and speaking disrespectfully to staff and counsel by internal emails, close quote. I will be officially requesting clarification on these generalized statements as they are the only evident basis for justifying the sanctions issue. This request will be made once I have received and reviewed the independent investigator's report of the 18 violations. To summarize, the 18 Code of Conduct violations issued to a counselor, followed by sanctions to that counselor, is a very serious matter, as serious as 26. It has many ramifications, including, but not limited to, a tarnishing of the professional and professional personal reputation of the accused counselor, a perception by residents of dysfunction within the council, and a deterrent for future potential counselors to be from pursuing opportunities in council to represent their community. I remain diligent in my investigation to bring to light any and all evidence related to the council's handling of the filing, documenting, and processing of the 18 Code of Conduct violations and associated sanctions. My intent is, as a concerned resident, to obtain clarity <coughs> and conviction that proper process was, in fact, followed for each of the 18 file violations. Thank you for the opportunity to submit this to record. I will forward you a signed copy by email. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Any other public input? Okay. All right, moving on. I have disclosures. Any disclosures, Council? I have a conflict of interest under 17A. Uh, item six reports. Uh, R.G. Krebs is usually here. He's not here. He'll do. He'll give both the next. Yeah. We'll, we'll catch up. We'll play catch up next time. He must have had something come up. Uh, presentations. Any, <laughs> any presentations from anyone that we know of? No. No presentations tonight. Uh, permit applications. We have zero building and zero development permits for January. Uh, proclamations, there isn't any. Uh, petitions and delegations, there's none. Moving on to item 11, business arising, committee composition and appointments. So we uh, have some information there, I believe, to we'll put out, discuss, and then move on to a motion. have to fall under a standing 
when you're talking about land and stuff like that, that could fall under our um, facility and property committee. Um, the other one was develop a policy for operational use as well as a multi-year plan for maintenance and upgrades on existing parks. This is currently in place with a binder from Recreation New Brunswick and that is operational through the CAO and staff. Um, any upgrades on new playgrounds would be a council decision, so that could come back as, as um, council. Make recommendations regarding recreation and leisure services as per the recreation and leisure master plan. This could easily be done as operational with public input. Um, identify community priorities for recreation services that easily could be operational and brought forward to council for recommendation. And plan and implement recreation and leisure activity events on an interim basis in collaboration with staff. Um, this will be done with the recreation coordinator in conjunction with CAO. Then the committees could decide if they want to do it with staff, summer students, or ad hoc committees. So. The other part of the mandate was review and make recommendations to council regarding <coughs> any and all applications for grants, licenses, permits, written material, and notices of activity, social media, and website. The operational committee could decide what is required. The communication committee could also review, and then the recreation coordinator and or CAO could make um, recommendations to council, and then staff could do. Work with community associations to develop and implement services pertaining to parks and rec. An operational committee could do this, not necessary for it to be a standing committee of just council members. Um, make recommendations regarding the annual budgets for parks and recreation. This would be under the authority of the recreation coordinator's position and the treasurer, and that would be brought forward to the finance committee. So. At this time, I don't feel, I think that having public on this committee is very important and it is my recommendation that Parks and Rec um, be an operational committee instead of a standing committee with this council. So, okay. I'd like to make motions that can start a debate on it, if possible. Yeah, Would I think well, I was going to start, I could start here. I'll start with Darren since you're speaking up. Well, she's done a preamble with it, so further discussion will generally warrant uh, a motion to continue, so I'd like to make a motion for it. Um, so I move to authorize and direct the clerk to change the committee compositions as the following. Uh, one, the standing committees would consist of finance, facilities and property, and governance and policies. <coughs> Two, operational committees would consist of parks and rec, communications and age friendly, rural plan review, environmental stewardship committees, and three, the mandated operational committees will consist of the Emergency Measures Committee. Okay, we'll have a seconder. I'll second. Okay, so motion's on the floor. Uh, start discussion on this end with we the Councilor Fox. Pardon? We no, we'll no, discussion first. Yeah. So, did you have anything, any comments, Councilor Fox? Not really, I'm comfortable with the, with the proposal and the committees as, they, as they're presented. Okay, thank you, Councilor Heisler. Okay, well, you probably, probably all know that I have a lot to say about this one. So, um, I would like to read this into record because it's uh, kind of lengthy anyway, but it's there for purpose, for future purposes. Um, there's quite a few points that I would like to address with regard to the committee composition document that was presented. Um, first, I agree wholeheartedly that volunteers are invaluable. They've been an absolute godsend with special committees, such as Handle Day, Spook Fest, etc. Those events simply could not have been done without dedicated volunteers. I honestly can't thank them enough. My experience is that many volunteers enjoy and prefer helping out with special events. They generally don't want to be committed to monthly meetings. On an events committee, there's immediate feedback and gratification for a well-run event. I do not have any issue whatsoever with residents sitting on any committee. However, council may want to have regulations around how this is done, as we currently do not have any formal procedure in place. 
Other municipalities require an expression of interest, as well as a resume, to ensure that they have the appropriate qualifications prior to being part of an advisory committee. Secondly, according to Robert's rules, which Council has adopted, there are two types of committees of Council. Standing committees, which have a continuing existence and function and are responsible for a particular subject matter. And special committees, sometimes referred to as hoc, as ad hoc or select committees, which are created for a particular task and go out of existence once the task is completed. Operational committees are not defined and therefore not permitted in Robert's rules. Accordingly, my understanding is that all of our committees are standing committees, other than the age-friendly committee, which was a special committee, as it was formed in order to get our age-friendly certification. I agree that the finance and facilities committees are standing committees, but they are also committees of the whole, as all of Council sits on them. If facilities is being changed to facilities and property, then the mandate needs to change accordingly. If the mandates are being changed and new, doc new committees added, then the whole policy document needs to be changed and mandates determined, which Council should be involved in. Council is responsible for setting policy and policy direction. All of our committees are advisory committees and report to Council, not the CAO as is being suggested with operational committees in this document. Robert's rules also states that new committees can only be added if our bylaw grants this permission according to page 163 of Robert's rules in brief. I don't believe our bylaw does so that doesn't our bylaw then need to be changed first before adding new committees such as environmental stewardship or any other new one. With regard to parks and rec, I agree that the mandate needs to be changed as the rec coordinator will soon be in place and that they should be in charge of all the operations with regard to recreation. As the CAO stated at our last meeting, staff are responsible for operations. Having been chair of Parks and Recreation for approximately eight years, I would think that a discussion should have taken place with me regarding changing the mandate of the committee. Quite frankly, not doing so is disrespectful. For whatever reason, it seems that Parks and Recreation's committee mandate has been singled out. According to the changes suggested to the current mandate in this document, 7.2A will now be under the new Facility Land Planning Committee. B is already in place. C, D, E, F, and G will be operations. Given this, there isn't any reason for Council to be involved in a Parks and Recreation Committee, as a new staff person, along with existing staff, will be able to do this. I personally do not want to chair an operational committee when staff have been hired to do just that. Standing committees are supposed to be strategic in nature, in my opinion. The recommendation stated is for the Governance Committee to amend the policy motion. However, we did not adopt the updated version of Policy 2014-1. Does that mean the Governance Committee is technically not a Committee of Council? Did we ever adopt a mandate for that committee? In my opinion, a Governance Committee should be a Committee of the Whole, as this is where bylaws and policy are being addressed. Currently, the process for bylaws is to have first reading and second reading by title, and then third reading in its entirety. Council has been told that during the first and second reading, questions are not allowed, which means Council does not know what changes are being considered until the third reading. As policy and policy direction are the main business of Council, a governance committee should be a committee of the whole. I believe that all of Council should be reviewing the entire policy 2014-1 on committees as it is out of date. With two new councillors coming on board, it is the perfect time to do this. I know a new rec coordinator will be hired in the near future, however that will not happen for at least a month or so. This will give time for Council to review the policy and make recommendations for the long term. This would include the mandate of all the committees, not just Parks and Recreation. In 2021, Council had a special meeting to go over this policy and make recommendations, but it was not adopted by Council. I think Council should have a special meeting to discuss all the committees to determine if they meet Council's needs. 
In sum, operational committees are not mentioned in Robert's Rules. All committees are advisory committees and report to council, <coughs> not the CAO. In my opinion, once a rec person is hired, there isn't any need for a Parks and Recreation Committee of Council, given the fact that it falls under operations. I would suggest that until that happens, the Parks and Rec Committee continue, as is, as there are a few events that have been planned. I would also suggest that Council <coughs> set a date to have a working meeting to review the committee policy and the mandates of each committee and, a draft, and draft a document to bring forth the resolution. The motion, in my opinion, is improper, as it violates Robert's Rules of Order. It also does not include the Governance Committee in the motion. I cannot see how this motion can be considered. It should be tabled until Council has had the opportunity to review the policy. That's it. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Can you provide a copy of that? Yeah, I will. Yeah, go ahead. Um, can we finish our debate first? Is okay, you folks tell me I don't, I don't know. You really, really should go through council first. Yeah, I think, I think that's the rules of you. Come on, you can yeah. follow up later. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just carry on around the table. No, no issues. Yep. Yeah. Councillor Jonah. I have nothing. Yeah. I, I, I kind of do. And I wasn't aware that the council of high school wasn't communicating with this. I just want to remind us all chairs of committees have power. They really do. You hear them on CBC radio, they're talking about what they're, cha what they're doing. City of Fredericton chairs are on talking about policing and what they want to do and stuff. We have to start respecting, and I've never recognized in myself what we're respecting the power a chair has. I think we have to start leaning into it a bit. So I'm sorry that you weren't, I didn't know. Uh, second, last week, I thought we tabled, last month, sorry, mm -hmm. I thought we tabled this so we could discuss this. When I first joined here, we all sat around the room and we debated that this and that, and it was actually a really good debate. I enjoyed it because I understood a lot, I learned a lot. And I thought we tabled this so we could have this and discuss it, because remember we were talking about the guy in the TV said we need it, blah, blah, blah. I'm looking at the government's report and I don't see even who was a part of this. So which one of you committee people think the Parks and Rec, in this case, is failing? What, what are we missing? What don't you fellows like from the government's committee, if you don't mind councillors, because you fellows are our Chair, chair, and co-chair. Yeah, I think you still are. Sorry, I apologize. I, I forgot to look it up before I started the conversation. What are is this chair failing that you folks are trying to solve? What is what is it you're trying to achieve here that I don't know yet? And so this is why I'm saying I think this shouldn't be here. Uh, when I said we should table it so we can talk about it, I didn't mean two of you fellows in a room. I meant so we can talk about it. I thought we were going to do it like last time because it was a really efficient, productive. Uh, thing, and we, we all came together, we agreed on certain things as we were going through. Uh, I actually, I didn't know some, I wasn't agreeing with some of the reasons. That, for me it was like, uh, why is this on our table? I didn't get to talk about it. I thought that's what we agreed last time we were going to table it so we can talk about it. But instead, apparently, did two of you fellows meet? Because I don't see who was in attendance at the Governance Committee meet. I don't know who was there. And I didn't rec think about this too, Council Isaac, that's a good point. I think we all should be on the Governance Committee. I feel like we're getting left in the dark. Um, I am. I feel I am. But that's probably on me. I have a right to attend it, as I understand, and I forgot that myself. So that's probably a lot more on me than it is on anybody else in this room. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Kenton. So lots of things to address. First off, um, that's what we're doing tonight, right now, is discussing this situation. As far as the actual rest of the committees and the committee policy, there was a previous date that was scheduled. It's going to look up here on my phone because I have it on my phone for a working session of council with that, and I believe it is actually next Thursday. Next Thursday, I have my calendar. Working meeting for the governance committee. That was to go over all the committee policies. Next Thursday. That is next Thursday night at 7 o'clock. It's been on their calendar for since at least the last meeting of council. So that, that is in discussion, it is in the works. Um, to address another thing, the government policy, the governance committee actually is in here. I certainly wouldn't, I have no issue with other people sitting on it as well. It doesn't really matter to me, I couldn't care less. Um, who wants to be on it? Uh, as far as the Robert's Rules of Order thing goes, um, technically accurate. The problem is, as the province has shown us very many times in the Local Governance Act and some of the other acts that they do, a lot of times that they, they, just don't, they don't go by it. Most cities do not have all their committees being standing committees. They have operational slash staff committees. Most of the ones even in the cities especially, in larger municipalities. They don't, they're not all committees of council of the whole. They are staff committees that report to the CAO, and they present reports at a council meeting. 
That's, that's the way larger municipalities work. And once we fully get things operational, that's the way things should work too. Once we have more staff, staff do the operations work. We do governance, they do operations. That's, that's the separation of duties. We just did training on this, like within the last month. There has to be a separation between operations work and governance work. We legislate things, staff do the operations with it. That's why committees are operational, most of them, other than the ones that actually make the decisions for council, which are like the finance committee. So that's, that's the difference between standing and operational and why they're not in Robert's rules because just that's the way New Brunswick works, quite frankly. Uh, um, as far as the, um, the reasoning behind it, it is my committee. Um, it isn't just me that suggested it, by the way. And I didn't realize that at this point, when we first started talking about this, obviously I didn't realize at the time that Holly wasn't most approached about it. Now, though, I do know that because we've been discussing this since before Christmas. So if there was more who had been said about it, there was lots of opportunity for the discussion about this prior to tonight. And in fact, last month when it was tabled, it was for more discussion on this tonight. We had a month to sit on it, we had a month to think about it. Councillor Heisel had a very long and very interesting report actually, with some very good points, quite frankly, in it, about it. I, I didn't do the same thing as her for next month because I just wanted to talk about live as things come up. So I, I stand by the motion. I still think that that's the way it should run. I think once the rec coordinator comes in here, nobody from council even has to be on that committee if they don't want to be. Uh, but it would be nice to have people from the public on it. And they should be working with the rec coordinator doing what the rec coordinators do because that's their job. That's all I have to say on that. Okay. Thank you. Come <clears throat> close. Well, I've got nothing, just basically since I'm new with it on the, in here and on the committee, so I'll just, you know, Holly definitely had some good points, but I, uh, I've got nothing right Okay, now. great. Thank you. Councilor Peck. I will be chairing a committee, uh, so it's in that lens that I'm replying, basically because I'm new to this as well. And there are things that I just don't understand about the, the history of committees for animal rural community. Uh, what I do have also, though, is experience volunteering on the communications committee for a year. And it was a very valuable experience. The people on the committee, Councillor Fox, <coughs> and uh, other residents of Hanwell were very good people. We got a lot of good work done. But I constantly wondered what it was I was supposed to be doing. So added to any aspect of this discussion, and by that I mean a discussion about our committees of council and their um, mandates, yes, I would like to have a component of our final decision be a job description for volunteers. Because if volunteers know what they're signing on for, they have a comfort level that they can judge what their personal commitment would be. And perhaps the job description would have a a time limit on it. Uh, you were mentioning that some committees are simply to accomplish a goal and then <coughs> expand ad hoc committees. But a, a job description of what the volunteering for, let's say, a recreation um, committee activity would be quite helpful, I think. Don't know who writes it, don't know whether it is a councillor chair of the committee or the CAO. Uh, I'd be willing to help in the sense of the committees that I would be shepherding, whatever that's going to turn out to be. But I do believe it's a very helpful thing uh, and would encourage people to volunteer. Thank you. Right, thank you. All right, any other comments from? I just have one. So the notice of the working meeting, when did that go out? That's my question. So I was, that's what I, I was going to say. Um, wasn't that on my chart? 
On your calendar? On my calendar that I sent out to you guys? We discussed it at a council meeting. It was either December or January. I'm pretty sure it was the January meeting we discussed it. Because we said time. that we... I was not at the January meeting. Uh, I, I called in. But you, to be perfectly frank, when people call in, it's really hard to hear yeah. what other people are saying. There's so much page shuffling and coughing and whatever. It's extremely hard. Yeah, it's really hard to listen to. Yeah. So, if it was, know. I didn't hear it. Yeah, so, um, so when is the working meeting? The committee was working on a bunch of um, amendments and we were going to all get together and a week from tonight. work on them together. Was so maybe I ask why we're voting on it now, so we're going to do it next week? Because that's for the committee policy, basically, the, uh, the policy itself. Sorry, I apologize, Council. I, no, go ahead. Sorry, no, right. I just jumped on you. I, I did apologize. the same thing. I apologize. No, that was me. I did that. No, me. Sorry. Carry on, Council. So it's February 23rd? Uh, yep, 23rd. Yeah, 7 to 9? Okay. My other um, idea is I do like the idea of having a volunteer job description. I think that's a great idea, Councillor Pat. Um, but my other thing is still, we did adopt Robert rules, and if we're not going to do our Robert's rules, then we're not following process. So, what is the point? Well, we have to have some rules to follow, and we should be trying to follow them as succinctly as possible. But Robert's rules, I don't know if they've been updated or not, but they're, they're certainly lacking a lot today. But today's it is world. what we adopted. Oh, yeah, I realize that. Yep. So what you sorry. Yep, so what you are saying is you want every councillor to be on every committee because well, that's what no. a standing committee is. Is the committee of the whole. So no, that is not what a standing committee is. It's not necessarily a committee of the whole. A standing is committee does not need to be a committee of the whole. That is what it's defined in Robert's rules. Standing committees can be um for example, you could have a communications committee, which is a standing committee. Standing committee just means it's a permanent committee. It's there all the time, which is what most of our committees are. They're standing. The only one that isn't is your age-friendly, which Deputy Mayor Jonah uh, was chair of. And that was only meant to be until we got our age-friendly certification, and then it would go out of existence. So no, so these, to me, the way this is worded is just, it's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. Standing committees, most of them are already currently standing committees. I will argue that till the cows come home. I really do feel that we need to take a step back and we need to look at our committee document, everyone, together. As, especially this. This is what the business of council is. Policy, bylaws, setting policy. No, I do not think a councillor should be on every committee. You want to have an operational committee? Perfect. Have your operational committee or working committee with just residents on it. That reports to you? That's fine. But not a committee of council. But I think it's something we need to sit and discuss. Okay, Councillor Fox. Yeah, so... I agree with that, and I think this is where some of the confusion comes. I agree that that operational committees sh don't need to be committees of council and shouldn't be, and 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 they can be set up however they work best. So, it, and I, and so maybe that's maybe that's the issue here is in terms of we're talking about committee composition standing versus operational, but only standing committees, in my mind, are a committee of council. So the others are committees, and they may bring a report to council out of, to provide information to council in terms of what they're doing. Um, so I feel like we're on the same page, but we're not on the same page, if that makes sense, in, in, term, in terms of this. Um, you know, and I'm also, I'm, I'm quite happy to you know, have a meeting and everybody sit and, and hash through these. Um, that's that's fine too. But I do, but I do believe there are there are standing committees and there are operational committees. They're not in Robert's rules because they're not committees of council. So they 
don't exist here. So, but doesn't mean that they can't exist and and do the functions that are listed here in terms of the functions. Okay, any other comments? Yeah, so that's, if I may, that's my last thing that I'll say on this too. So the, they're both correct. So yes, standing committees and ad hoc committees is the other name that's following Robert's rules of the council or of the board. But you said, are you, uh, Councilor Fox is right. It sounds like we're on the same page with it. It's just a terminology issue that some, some of us can't get past. The, the operation committee basically has nothing to do with council. If a councilor wants to sit on it as a resident or as somebody that wants to be involved with something, then fine, they can. But it's nothing to do with council. It, it's, a, it's a committee of the staff, the same way as it is with any other municipality. Just like our Hanwell's Ace Committee. They do a report up for, for council, but councilors don't have to stand, don't have to sit on it. It's, the, it's exactly the same as that, or school facts. We had some, some councilors running it, and was, I did a fantastic job of that, by the way. Um, but we didn't have to be on it. Right? It was that was, it had nothing really to do with council. It was completely independent. That's an operational committee. Right? That's that that's the way that that would work. Is, and that, that's where we have to find the separation. That some of these have to do with council and some of them don't. They're run by staff. The rec coordinator runs the recreation committee. That's a, it's a staff issue. If councilors want to sit on it and help to find out what's going on, they're welcome to do it. And any other operational committee as well, the communications committee. I've never even sat to be in a meeting for communications committee, but I know they're doing a fantastic job too. Mm -hmm. So we see the Herald. Or, okay, that's the last thing I'm going to say. That. Okay, great. Good. Councilor Heisler. I agree with you that the recreation should be operational. That I totally agree with that because it is. The staff have been hired. I totally agree with that. That's. But on the other flip side of the coin. If the mayor is appointing chairs and vice chairs to a committee, it becomes a committee of council. So we we need to we need to change the policies and bylaws to reflect that. Okay. All right. Any more comments? Okay. So where do we go? Oh, sorry, Councilor Bob. Sorry. Just I agree. <laughs> Great. Just so I, yeah. yeah. All right. So we have a motion on the floor. We can either continue with it and vote on it, or we can table it once more and meet, like we're meeting set for next Thursday, uh, work this through so everybody has a clear understanding of just exactly what the difference is between standing committees, ad hoc committees, <coughs> committees of council, the whole deal, and decide as a group where we're going to go and everybody has input and we'll take it from there. The motion's on the floor, though. Right. We do oh, have we'll, to vote we'll, on we'll it. We'll have to, but yeah. You, you can motion, put no. it motion. Now I move to table this till next uh, council meeting. This one's on the floor. Yeah, this one's on the floor. yeah but you vote on this one now. You, so if I can get a seconder, then we vote on this one, and then we. The, yeah. He's okay. correct. Point order. He's correct. So we can put the motion on the floor. It would be since we know the date, though, it would be postponing and not tabling. Tabling is indefinite. Right. So it would just be postponing it to next month to vote, and then if we someone seconds it, that that supersedes I the motion. Move, on the floor. Yeah. So I move to postpone this till the next council meeting. Mm -hmm. no, no. Next Thursday, I believe. No. Next no. Thursday. Council meeting. Council. council you have meeting. to vote on council. Next Thursday is just us talking about it. That's all right. Yes. Okay. Good. I see. I get where you're coming from. She seconded. I seconded. Okay. And so for the next council meeting. That's right. Yes. Okay. But we're going to have a meeting on next Thursday to have discussion. Right. The debate. Yeah. Debate. Discussion. Okay. So that motion kills the former motion. Not yet. We have to vote on this one, and we'll find it. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Any questions, discussions on Councilor Septon's motion? And I have, a, we have, okay, we have a motion, we have a second, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor, signify oh, by saying aye. 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 Almost contrary minded. Great, motion carried. Now, uh, the other one, is it canceled or do we have to withdraw? It's dead. No, it's dead. It's, it's, it's dead. just moves to the next Okay, point. great. And uh, just as point of order, that, was, that wasn't in the calendar, not anybody's fault, I really don't care. Thursday wasn't in uh, oh. the. Uh, uh, oh, there. Okay. Aye. It's okay. Jeez, I don't remember half the crap I'm doing, but it just wasn't in that either. Okay. I thought for sure I sent you it's guys out a working email. Y you did, it just uh, wasn't. Yeah, it might not be in yeah, that. Yeah, like, I just thought that I sent you out. It's all, it's all good. Okay. Just as it is all good. Okay, we know where we're going. Somehow we'll manage to get that. Right. Right. Next week at 7 o'clock is before. Thursday, right. yeah. Next Thursday, yeah. yeah. 
Okay, uh, 11B <coughs> is the Hanwell uh, Park bike design vote, and Councilman McKenzie is going to speak on this. Okay, so this, we've been working on this one for a long time, um, but to rewind here a bit and give the summary of where we, where we are tonight and how we got here. So, um, the Recreation Committee, of course, uh, met, we had a presentation from River Valley Cycling. Was it was October last year? Yeah. yeah. It was October, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And um, we had a discussion about it. They talked about their volunteer. RBC has basically volunteer groups. They did a lot of work. They did um, most of the work actually out in the uh, Worcester Park. Worcester, Worcester Park, yeah. Um, they they're actually all. Well, they're everywhere right yeah. around the area, but they basically have committees that have or groups of people that even have like tractors and stuff and they do what they call volunteer weekends or whatever and they'll come out and help help build things but they need direction what to do first so I'm not an expert on this and then none of us I think at the table were so we asked them to talk to us or refer to us to what their experts are because it's a very specialized thing you can't just ask a general contractor to build a, a like park well they probably could but it, it wouldn't work right it wouldn't that's not what people that are expecting to go to that park are expecting to see. They have very specific expectations and specifications and the way they're designed, whatever. So they gave us two contact names that they usually work with. They said that, um, because they work with them on a regular basis, that they're booked up for about 18 months, for the next 18 months with it. But I, I, on a shot, I've reached out anyway to see what happened and uh, left voicemails and so forth. And one of them did get back to me. Um, don't have his name off the top of my head, I can't remember. Um, I apologize for that. But anyway, Ryan. Ryan, thank you, from Trailflow, did get back to me about it. And uh, I ended up, t I talked to him on the phone for a bit, and then I sent them an email with the, because uh, all I had was phone numbers, I didn't have any email addresses or anything like that. So I left the messages. Ryan called me back, I sent him, got his email address, um, sent him an email with the location, the Google Maps location of it to give a description of what we, where it needed to be, um, the background behind why we're putting it specifically there and not on a larger plot of land. It's just the fact that, uh, and this is for the public in the, in the recording as well, that might not be aware of it. So on Brookdale, on Camber Drive, Brookdale Recreation Park, there's a small plot, like a uh, t-ball field, but it's in really, really bad shape. In fact, it's, it's um, so bad that we had to put a sign up as a warning for people, not because we were concerned someone's going to break their ankle on it last year. It's basically mobiles to the whole thing. And the reason being, of course, that I, when it probably was built 20 odd-ish years ago, they didn't use very good fill. They just used like wood stumps and whatever. That stuff rots and it leaves pits. Uh, and there's, there's, there's pits all over the place. So that has to be graded regardless. So we looked at this as an opportunity. Um, it wouldn't be a big one, but since the Recreation Committee and Council have been both talking about, we even have in the capital plan to do uh, small neighborhood parks and stuff like that. Maybe this would be one of many of these little hills because I was stunned at the small cost that the engineering came back with with this. Maybe we can end up doing some, some of these in, in other subdivisions at some point in the future. Um, we also do have a, a fairly substantial amount in the capital plan laid out from gas tax for this. So we may be able to build a couple of these at some point in, in, as time goes on. But the, the immediate need is we have to grade that field anyway this year before somebody gets hurt. So if nothing else, we'll, we'll, we can use this as an opportunity to grade it, get an idea of what to do with it, and if nothing else, just get some dirt moved around with some trackers over there and, uh, and something to start with. Uh, and, but he was confident that he would have time to work on this over the winter with us and get something back to us by uh, hopefully when the ground thaws, when we get, the we get a tractor over there. Um, so. That was a bit of a long-winded uh, trailer to this, so um, I'd like to motion there. So, whereas a BMX bike park is in the Recreation and Leisure Master Plan, and whereas this park is already budgeted in the Fiverr Capital Plan, and whereas a meeting with local experts from River Valley Cycling gave a recommendation to reach out to the only two engineering companies that they're familiar with in the Maritimes for the specialized type of design, and whereas Trail Flow in Nova Scotia was the only one of those to respond, with a quote to take on this design, I hereby motion to authorize and direct staff to reach out to Trailflow to begin the design for this project for the cost of $5,577.50, including HST. I have a second. I'll second that. 
Okay, any discussion, questions? Yes, okay, we'll start with Councilor Sack. Yeah, actually, uh, my most important person I want to listen to is the, the, the Councilor of the Ward. Uh, when we did this in parks, I said, look, it's a great idea. I actually am for this project. I think it's awesome. I think communities should have it. I think kids need a place to go biking. My concern is, so long as the homeowners are addressed, because they tend not to like loitering teenagers, even though they're the best of kind. I mean, I'm telling you, our teenagers are awesome. So, I guess I'm mostly interested in, uh, because it's going to affect you fellows on that side more than it will me, although my kids will go biking there, without a doubt. I just want to make sure that you fellows are reason that this is a good place for it, that it fits in. I love the idea of having it there. I think it would be great to have a park, but I want to make sure that we have some consideration for the neighbors in the area. May, may I? Sure. So, uh, did everybody see the uh, fairly detailed quote that he sent out and stuff? Mm -hmm. So, this includes... Oh, uh, sorry. sorry. This includes working with council on it, and he will actually be willing to do a couple runs on this. So if they do design, we say, no, it's not aesthetically pleasing enough. But that wasn't my point. My point was about the neighbors, the, the citizens. Oh, not, not necessarily the design. This is making sure that the moms and dads who have properties around this mm -hmm. aren't going to be upset. Because, again, kids are awesome, but parents are jerks sometimes. Mm -hmm. And where they won't let their kids hang out just because they're biking and noisy. And that's what I'm concerned of, because that's actually right in that residential area. Mm -hmm. It does solve the parking problem because kids are going to bike there. So that's much better than the T-ball was back yeah. in the day. Remember the parking? Yeah. That was pretty bad. I just want to make sure that, uh, anyway, so I'm really looking forward to hearing what, uh, and yourself, Your Worship, because you're from that area as well. Might be maybe a good idea to hold, hold a public meeting and let them have input if they think it's a good idea or not. Because Lord knows we don't want to get a, a racket going on that people are, you know, against it like we had in Garmin Park. There was a, almost a protest there one day. So wouldn't it be less noisy than the current handball soccer events that we have over there every night during the summer? Why would it be any different than that? Uh, because now the parents aren't there with their kids. There's no supervision. There's a few other things. And, and I'm not trying to talk down. I actually love the idea. Mm. So my question would be, can they just design something that can... We have all come mad with now. There's tons of land. Of course, kids can't bike there easily now, can they? That's, that's the downside of that whole argument. Which is why I love it there. But I think I agree with his worship. There should be some consultation. With if you fellas did it, bang on. Yeah. But like I said, with, with anything, you're going to get either buy-in from the neighbors or conflict from the neighbors and you know disgruntled neighbors we don't want. I would much prefer, you know, again, it's not up to me, but to have buy-in from the surrounding neighbors. I think it would probably be a good idea because I mean, I'm all for it. I think it's a great idea. And I, it wouldn't bother me if it was across the street from me. So, me but. You know, we do have, uh, that's, a, that's an older neighborhood, that's probably the oldest neighborhood in the subdivision. That's, you know, that was one of the earlier streets, and that uh, park was donated to the Brookdale Ref Commission very early on. It was the, one of the first residences there who sat on that, com on that uh, committee. So before we make this motion, I think maybe, you know, again, I think we should have a little talk with the neighbors and, and to see what their thoughts are, just to save, uh, you know, an uproar after we've already spent the money. Sure. Okay. I think I'm overlooking probably where we're going to talk about the new committees, the Rural Plan Review Committee and the Environmental Stewardship Committee. Yeah, Is that on there? Yeah, that's it was part of um, the previous board. motion. Okay. Part of the Saying previous. And they tabled it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we did staple it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So I just would have said there is in item B of the Environmental Stewardship Committee uh, mention of reviewing land use in present and future recreation properties of the municipality to identify potential for existing regulatory compliance issues. So if that does get in the mix of committees, I can see the importance of this project overseers linking with the Environmental Stewardship Committee members just to cross-reference when it comes to aspects like the Wawa regulations of the project. That's my only um, uh, comment. I too think it's an excellent project. It's time for us to really start being careful of our natural infrastructure though as we move forward in Hanwell. And if there's a wall wall permit required, that means there's a wetland there for a water course. Yep, there is. And they will work with us 
uh, with that as well. To help them work with it. Yeah. And so they is the rec committee or the governance committee or the what? The staff. Okay. So again, there's this great big network of who is looking after what. <laughs> it's just to me a very important move as we start the new Hanwell to be conscious of our natural infrastructure, not just our physical infrastructure. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Fox. So, um, thank you, Councillor Peck. I think that um, certainly when I look at this and when I look at that property, um, there, is a, there is a creek that runs through there. There is, there is wetland area in there. Um, and I think that it only makes sense that we ensure anything that we do in there is done the right way. Um, and I just had, I, I also had a question on this. So this is just for the design correct. portion yeah. of that. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, I do think, I, I think it's a great project. I think it's um, something that would be well used in the community. It'll mm -hmm. give the kids a place to bike to and use. But I do think as well that it would be great to do a little bit of an open house about it. I wonder though if we shouldn't get the design first, mm -hmm. present the design, and then do an open house. Like I think for the for the small amount of money it is to do the design, I think it's better to go to an open house with a with a project in place. All and and, let, and then let people talk about the pros and cons of it. So that's what I'd like to see us do with well this. Well done. I agree. Yeah. Yes. Well that's going to be my point too. Yeah, well done. That's a good argument. Okay, Councilor Heisler. So um, I agree. Like I agree that we need to be very careful of our natural environment and our natural infrastructure. And I agree that we should wait until we have the design for an open house. Um, I would also add though that maybe during that time that it takes us to get this design, we have other things that we can bring forward at the open house other projects mm -hmm. that we're working on so that it's not just yeah. one mm -hmm. particular That's a great um, idea. That's one particular area. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, I, think, yeah, I think that would be very wise to have, like I said, mm -hmm. if we want to have an open house, we want to you know, yeah. have as many options on the table of what, what council's doing for the benefit of the community. It would be great during Hamble days to have everything that's going to be happening. That's, that's, right. great. that's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I think we should. Anyway, that's it for me. Okay, any other comments? So is everybody prepared to vote? All right. Uh, all those in favor of awarding the contract for the design to fair flow, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those contrary minded. Great. Motion carried. Thank you, Council. Okay. 12A correspondence yeah, in the Heart and Stroke Foundation. Has everybody there's been on the company uh, letter for there? This letter is yeah. just giving us, letting us know that um, they're going to be canvassing the neighborhood for heart and stroke or whatever. So we will put it on social media and let people know when they have a stranger come to the door that it is po possibly. Yeah, that's a good idea. We do have several of them going around campaigning. So I move to accept the correspondence from the Indy Heart and Stroke Foundation of the Brunswick. With respect to the door to door campaign, and authorize and direct the clerk to advise our residents of this campaign. I'll second it. Having had three heart attacks. Only <laughs> three. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have laughed so loud. I apologize. <coughs> okay, any comments? Funny. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those contrary, mind. Thank you. Motion carried. Okay, uh, item 13, meetings and special oh, events. Oh, 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 Pardon? You added 12B. Oh, yeah. Here's the DTR letter. Here's the DTR letter. Yes, there it is. Yeah. Okay, we, uh, <coughs> we did get, uh, get back, uh, or get back from DTI, from uh, the minister, uh, rather a uh, speedy reply. <coughs> so I'll just, uh, I'm just going to read this end of the minute so everybody is aware. I think it's a very important letter. It tells, uh, tells us basically what they're willing to do, what they can do, what they can't do. So it's going to, uh, it came from Jeff Carr's, uh, he's got his signature on it, so he's well aware of it. 
So it starts out, uh, Mayor Morrison, thank you for the opportunity to discuss the transportation related concerns you identified in your letter of January 9th, 2023. Regarding the area of Hanwell Industrial Park, as follow up to our discussions, please see the information below. Ownership and maintenance of uh, Route 640 Hanwell Road with respect to the installation and maintenance of related infrastructure, i.e. traffic lights, sidewalks, crosswalks, etc. As a practice, the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure does not provide for sidewalks or trails within a local government. The installation and maintenance of infrastructure such as traffic signals or sidewalks is the responsibility of the local government and is typically part of its long-term development plan. Please note that anything located within the right-of-way of a provincial highway requires approval by DTI. On provincial highways, crosswalks are DTI's responsibility. Generally, 640 is not a candidate for a crosswalk given the roadway, environment, and speed limit. This does not prevent people from safely crossing the roadway. When crossing any roadway at any location, pedestrians should always practice appropriate safe behaviors. Lowering the speed limit on Route 640. Requests for posting speed limit reductions must be submitted to DTI for consideration as they require a technical evaluation. Recently, DTI evaluated a request to reduce the speed limit on Route 640 from Camber Drive to Masra Summit Road from 80 to 50 kilometers. The evaluation was completed in the fall of 2022 and confirmed that 80 kilometers is, the appropriate, is appropriate for the area and the environment. Traffic issues at the intersection of Route 640 and Greenview Drive, Hanwell Business Industrial Park. Route 640 is a provincial highway. As such, capital work to improve traffic man management will be DTI's responsibility. Although this area of Route 640 is not currently part of our three-year capital plan, we have engaged an engineering consultant to complete a study. A draft has been received and is under review. Access road between the highway and business park properties. A parallel access road between Route 2 and the industrial park was constructed prior to the industrial park being developed. This road continues to provide access to the property at the end of it and is therefore still required by DTI. Proposed secondary ramps providing egress and ingress to the industrial park. DTI has no plans to add ramps in the area. The existing ramps provide appropriate egress and ingress for the industrial park. If you have any further transportation related questions, please contact the Transportation Information Center. Uh, uh, they have the website or the web or the mail address and the phone numbers. Sincerely, Jeff Carr, Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure. So that was a pretty speedy response, and he uh, he lays out basically what, what they're responsible for, what we're responsible for, and what they're willing to do. I move to accept the correspondence from Minister Jeff Carr, Transportation and Infrastructure, regarding transportation related matters in Hanwell Rural Community. Seconded. Do we receive the report? Yes, we should receive, receive, receive yeah. it rather than accept it. Yeah, it's written okay. accept, but I've, uh, I've actually crossed mine out and put receive. So if people want to do that, all those reports have accept in them, but they, they're meant to for receive. Receive, okay. And the only difference for the new uh, folks is that if it's received, it doesn't indicate that something has to be done. If it's accepted, that there has something else that's coming into the uh, report that has to be voted on or has to be done. In this case, there was actually nothing written. In the no, I no. just modified the one. Yeah. Yep. Second. Okay. Second. Yes, do we have a second? second. Okay. Any questions, concerns? I actually, is it possible? <laughs> is it possible for us to have the actual technical evaluation to see it? We can, we can request it. I think it's a good idea. I mean, yeah, we should have. I think it, it's something that we should have. I think it's something that we need to put out to the public. If we're telling them, sorry. They won't do it, then I think we need to be able to back it up because that was the major, major issue for a lot of our residents. Well, we can certainly ask for it. That's, that's well, the first and if go. not, we can our tip up. Oh, yeah. Private citizens can definitely yeah. our tip up, of course. Okay, okay. just want to make sure. Uh, so, uh, Terry, can you mm -hmm. look after that for uh, Yeah. Or, yeah. or sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Councillor Fox. Well, I do want to express how disappointed I am. Um, with respect especially to the lowering in speed limit. Um, I'm disappointed that it has to go through a technical evaluation when it's clearly the wish of this council to have the speed reduced. Um, we've been concerned about safety, especially around the school, since forever. 
And for that, it, it, I feel as though this is being very dismissive. So I, I, I agree with Councillor Hyslop that we should have that technical report. Um, if for no other reason, so that we can understand better why that decision has been made. Um, and I'm also disappointed that this was apparently done in the fall and we're just finding out now um, when we had asked for this. So um, I recognize there's not a whole lot we can do, um, but I do just want to express my um, disappointment with the province on this issue. Okay. Yeah, the clerk will contact DTI and ask for that documentation. Okay. Uh, Councillor McKenzie. Actually, Councillor Sepp has in a first. Okay, I just see the two of you. So, okay. yeah, Councillor Sepp and go. So, uh, yeah, this report, I think dismay is appropriate. Uh, I agree, by the way, great catch. I didn't catch uh, the technical. The word generally, 640 generally, that word sticks out and is hurting me. Generally, a highway doesn't have a highway. Of course, a crosswalk. Of course it doesn't. This is a school, so I'd like Council to send in the letter stating and reminding the minister that there's a school here with kids on it. And I tell you, generally, kids don't get hit by cars. Generally. But it does happen. So I want to make sure people understand what the situation here is generally. I'm less concerned with the speed limit reduction. If the urban can have a crosswalk to get their patrons across at 70, I'm fine with doing it here. I literally am okay with that. That's all I have to say. But I would ask that we remind them that there's a school across there that generally doesn't cut. Okay, Councillor McKenzie. Yeah, like Councillor Septon, my blood is boiling over this. They're basically saying on one hand that uh, it's, it's uh, well, not just a general thing. Like, New Maryland has a highway going through it too, but it generally has a sidewalk lead highway down and it has, <coughs> and it has lots of crosswalks on it. You know? um, and, it and it's a 60 zone. So it's generally the same as Route 640, except that it's a 60 zone instead right. of an 80 zone. It doesn't really make sense to me. And they're saying basically that um, they need permission to do it. Well, they're, on one hand, they're saying you can't do anything on, on a provincial highway with permission. And they're basically telling them we want to lower speed limit. They're saying, well, we're not giving you permission to do it. What's the point of having to ask permission for it if they're basically just going to deny what we're going to ask them to do anyway? We weren't really to asking for permission to lower it. We wanted it down. This was a request. No, it wasn't. A request to lower it, not a request to do a study on it. They had, we ended up doing the study because they said they wouldn't lower it until they did the study. So they basically did the study that we didn't even know they were doing, and they came back and said, nah, it's going to stay just the way it is right now. That doesn't make sense. I'm also really angry for the, almost the exact same reason about the ramps for the industrial park. They're basically saying, we've been telling them for years we wanted ramps there after the park started expanding, and they're basically saying, well, we, we won't do it because it's provincial highway. But I know you're asked us to do it, but we're going to say no. It's the same thing. It's like, it's, it's, it's infuriating not having control over something that we want to do. And even, which is worse, is even if we did it on the roads, since they're provincial, though both provincial roads, we still couldn't do it even if we wanted to do it. That, it just, it burns me up that when we want to do something, that they just tell us no, that we can't do it. Even though we've given lots of justification for years for the ramps, quite frankly, too. The school is more recent, but for years we've been telling them why we need ramps there. And they just completely ignore it. It's like, yeah, you can, you can request it, but we have to grant the permission and we say no. That's just... Uh, I don't know what to say. I like that. I don't know what else to say with it. It just... Yeah, I'm, just, I'm really angry. I can't believe that they would do that to us. Well, like I said, we'll ask, certainly ask for the technical evaluation and we'll see what's in it. I have no idea. Yeah. But I think it's a good idea to have a look at it. So if they'll give it to us. I can't see them not, but again, I can't speak for government either. So. Yes, Councillor Patrick. We'd just like to add to the conversation what I did last month on this issue. There was a promise for a traffic study on Route 102 through the Island View area, and it was never provided. The results were never provided to the uh, advisory committee members and community members. And um, there was e not even a letter sent. Yeah, we can, we can so, certainly follow up as council. Well, 
there's a precedent set. They just said no, and there was it, it came through the uh, MLA's um, okay. executive assistant. Okay, you did get some communication back. Yes, okay. but not from DTI. We should be able to ask again. That's a separate subject. But we should it would be, be on, in their files, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, we can certainly follow up and ask. So was a traffic study done for Route 102? Yes. When was it done? I'll have to look that up. I have it in my file. Okay. Any particular section or was it for the whole road? It was from this uh, request for was for the speed limit to be dropped from 90 to 80. And the section in Island View where it goes to 90 is right by the Provincial Tree Nursery. Mm -hmm. to the <coughs> ramp at uh, just above the First Nations yep, the to dam, the, right? the dam yep. and that's where the speed limit rises to 100. So it was in the zone of 90. Okay, yeah, something we can do, certainly do a follow-up with. Yeah. And it was before the First Nations underpass was put in place. Right. Yeah. That's quite a while ago. It right? is quite a while ago. Yeah. So it was from the tree nursery to um, the off ramp to the Mount Clark yeah. Road. The dam. Oh, the dam, okay, yeah. The dam exit. Yep. <laughs> to Mount Clark Road, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, all those in favor of receiving the correspondence from DPI, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those contrary, mind. Thank you. Okay, now moving on to 13A, the mayor's report. Uh, has everybody got that report? We do. Uh, I don't have a physical copy. Sorry. Right. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 There, there was a lot of information in that document. I didn't know what I was supposed to look at. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of information in there that I thought council would at least like to peruse. There was so that was just more for our information because I was trying to find it with the with the legal issues were and what yeah. what. This well, MOU meant and what that yeah. MOU meant. The MOU is the memorandum of understanding. There's two. I recognize. Of them. Yeah, there's one for tourism. It, what the and there's also one for the ignite. And what those memorandums do is lay out what their responsibilities are, what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, and there's also how the uh, contract can be gotten out by either party. So it's a but it's a long legal deal, but it's a I think it's worth a read. I don't. I, I right, certainly didn't understand it all, but I got the gist of it. But we didn't sign that yet, right? I, I saw the mayor, okay. Mayor Kate uh, Rogers, I believe, signed it, didn't she? And, it's uh, it's signed on behalf uh, with uh, the Capital, Capital Social Region Social Service Commission on our on our on, on, our, our, on behalf. our behalf. Yeah, but that's just the the actual the actual MOU. So that, that was that truly just on. an FYI. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. More or less. Yeah. Because they <clears throat> certainly ask for that information. They want to have an MOU before they would authorize hiring either Ignite or Frederick Tourism to do those two uh, mandated services. Okay. So Mayor Morrison usually will email, like he goes, attends a meeting, and then he always emails you guys. And then when it comes to the council meeting, he provides this report. So I had suggested to him that maybe he should just keep all the documents to have with the report so that There's an awful lot of reading though. I, I could have used a couple more days. And I, I'm not quite sure I completely understood it all, so I tried to read as much as I could, but I worked during the day and other things, and, and obviously training. But it, maybe it, it, it was a really huge helpful. document. Yeah. yeah, but again, it's, a, you know, there's, it's there, it's the information. You don't have to read it tonight. You can read it over the next number right. of years. FYI. I was it's, worried it's I was trying FYI. to find something in it, and no. I didn't know what I was preparing yeah. for. And it's mandated, so we can't really opt out of it. No, that's right. It's we, more of an FYI. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Council that's Heisler. So would it be beneficial then for your mayor's report, when, if it is just an FYI, to let us know that? Because I was thinking, mm. is this something that council is needing to deal with? Are we voting on this? Are we, you know, making recommendations? Are we, like, I wasn't sure where we were going okay. with yeah. that. No, fair question. So yeah. maybe if it's just for our information, then... Say so. Yeah, just yeah. let us know so that... Yeah, if I'm not going to read it. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, There's a lot of reading. I, I could read it if we can go past 9 o'clock. No, no, we're going to do it now. We're good. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, great. Was there any other questions on the mayor's report? No? Councilor Peck? So, 
I was to receive an email from you about these individual. It would have been attached to your agenda. Because. Um, no, there was no individual stuff about that particular thing. It was just the MOU that, that we had. She was looking for reports in each one of these items. Oh, yeah, no. But no. I didn't see an MOU report. You had to scroll it down. It would have been in your agenda yeah. package that I sent. Forever. <laughs> okay. Yesterday, I, or on the weekend. Uh, okay. There were so many times that it, I just didn't obviously get to that, <clears throat> though I got it. Okay. But I'll try there was also another report, I don't know if everybody read that one or not, on the, what would it be, the, uh, I've lost my word. Yeah, anyway, making recommendations right. for to sit on what committees. Were committees there. It used to be work. the commission had com uh, committees in-house. So the only ones that sat on those committees were either the mayor or the mayor's designate, which was always the deputy mayor. So they've since opened those committees up because there's a, there's a lot of committees, I think there's seven in all. Six, I guess, you know, and they've opened them up to really to get draw on what's able to council. There's a lot. Of, I think there's a lot of talent in council, and there's a lot of people that have a lot of skill sets that they could offer the committee. So rather than rely on just the directors, that if that motion was made and it was passed unanimously by the membership. So now those committees are now open to councillors, and I made nominations for each of those committees to or for somebody from Hamill to sit on them. Now it's only my nomination. So whether that carries any weight or not, somehow I doubt it. The chair and the vice chair will look at all the nominations and they will pick accordingly. And they had to have it in by such and such a date because it would have been nice to add a CV or whatnot to those committee recommendations so people knew what their skill set was. Say, for instance, we had, I don't know, had a, somebody with an MBA or whatnot might want to sit on a, on a committee that's very well qualified for that. So and the other one was that for to sit as a director of Ignite, because Ignite was looking for four directors. One's automatically the city. The other three will come from the communities with within the, the uh, uh, Capital Region Service Commission. So it's again, it's uh, <coughs> what the chances are. Like if we get on, you know, a couple of committees, great. If we get on one committee, that's at least that's uh, it's the whole thing is to lighten the load from, you know, from. Uh, Directors, because like uh, uh, the executive director, Mr. Fitzgerald, said, you know, uh, a mayor may sit on one, two, or even three committees. And people said, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not working for the commission here. I'm the mayor of the city of Reading or the mayor of Arcadia or Hamla. And they were asking a lot. So that's, I think that's why it was open <coughs> to the uh, councils. No, it's, I think it's a good idea. So. Anyway, any other questions? Okay. All those in favor signify by saying. I don't think we did motions. Yeah. Yeah. I move to accept the mayor's report. Yep. Receive. Receive the mayor's Receive. report. Oh. <laughs> I'll second. That's right. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying. Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. So uh, the committee reports will not be read into the minutes. However, they can be found on our website under the committee section. So councillors already know that. That's just information for the public. All these committee reports are put on the Rural Community of Hamill's uh, official website. It's just like our minutes are there, uh, so these minutes will be there. If anybody wants to peruse them, uh, they're there for your benefit. So moving on to 14 committee reports, uh, age friendly. Yeah. Uh, point of order, Councilor Bowman, sure. we had uh, uh, I'm going to mess up her last name. Jill Stairs here. Yes. Uh, she said that we could read these all at once, so we can say motion to accept all reports. The, that point of information, so that's, that's coming. That's one of the uh, options that's going to be changed in the procedural bylaw. Mm -hmm. But her point was we didn't have to change it. We can do it. Can I just do that now? Or do we Not have to until change we change it? the procedural bylaw. Same. Thanks. Is that what they call the consent package? Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Consent. Yeah. You just give one. Yeah. Yeah. Agree to it. And just got all at once. So. Yeah. Well but that may be sticky if one of the committees hasn't accept versus a... You can pull it out. Then you can yeah. pull, pull, pull it out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I move to accept the age friendly report. Receive. Receive the age friendly report. <laughs> I'll second. Second. Okay. All those in favor of receiving. Any questions? Sorry. Any questions, concerns on the age friendly committee report? Okay. All those in favor of receiving the report? Report, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those contrary, motion carried. Thank you. All right, communications. I 
don't think we had a communications, uh, economic development. We don't have one of those. Uh, we have EMO. So we have a committee report there. So I'll pass it over to our EMO person. We're not reading it. We're not reading it. I move to receive the emergency measures report. I'll second it. Okay. Any questions, concerns? I do have a question for sure. the EMO. Uh, when we had the 911 issue, that would have been a great time for Sentinel. I know I brought it up a few times, but we have to get that Sentinel system tested. That when our 911 system went out, Facebook should not have been a place where we talked about 911. Uh, in the deep cold, we should have been using it for stuff like that. So if we can make that a priority, uh, I, I respectfully ask that we ask them. Remember, the last Sentinel test failed, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with failure. Mm -hmm. Failure is fine in technology. That's why you test. Right. Mm -hmm. But we haven't retested. So we, we're going to have to... Those two times should have been a time we could have used this to help our community. Anyway, thank you. I agree. Yeah, I agree with Councillor Sefton as well. It would have been a great time to test it. Okay. Call the question. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Call for the question. All those in favor of accepting the email report, please signify by saying aye. Uh, uh, all those contrary minded. Motion carried. Uh, finance no report. Moving on to governance and policies. I move to receive the governance committee report. Second. Okay. Questions? Discussion? All those in favor of receiving the report, please signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Uh, all those contrary minded. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the Parks and Recreation. I move to receive the Parks and Recreation Committee report as presented. I'll second. Okay, any discussion, questions? I have one, then. Is there any talk on Hamill Days? No. Nothing yet. Oh, sorry, the committee, we yeah. did discuss it, but there weren't any takers in terms of chairing or right. sitting on another committee. Okay. So, so it will have to go out. Um, I think we should just put a notice out to everyone and see if anybody on council wants to. I think that's a that's a good Do idea. Yeah, the point of information it's on the, uh, the thing for 17C for a minor discussion anyway. Oh, there you go. Might not go anywhere, but it's, it's on there. Mm -hmm. oh. 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 Mr. Mayor, I, being new, have no idea how a new idea for an event related to. Um, recreation is brought forward. Is that just sent to the clerk or uh, Earth Day is April 22nd or 23rd? 22nd. 22nd. And if we do have a environmental stewardship <laughs> approved when we next meet, to me it partners very well with the recreation committee and and that's sort of an initiative. And I don't think you've had an Earth Day. 2017 was the last one we did. Okay. Yeah. So and it was... actually it was discussed at uh, Parks and Recreation because Councillor McKenzie wanted to do an Earth Day open house, but he doesn't have the time right now to do that. Yeah, so... the, the last one that was prepared, we had about 30 odd vendors ready to go for it. And then COVID hit mm -hmm. right as we were ready to do this. And then dropped, everything basically got dropped, and then it got postponed. And if you want, I can go back through with my emails, though, and a after that committee gets spun up and send it all off to you. And if you want to go reach out to people, can I respond? It doesn't necessarily have to be an event as in an activity involving the public and requiring a committee or, or volunteers to operate. It can be like what was sent out about the scavenger mm -hmm. hunt, something like that. The National Earth Day group have those things already. So if we just took a look at them, it would be not an onerous amount. So when, when is Earth Day? 22nd of April. Of April, so it's far enough away. So does anybody, anybody in council want to kind of take that on and do something with it? Well, I want an official committee before. <laughs> But like I said, it doesn't have to be a committee. It's something that I can No, but it would be nice that it's linked in there and that we start off in the way we should go. So I would yet say yes, pending the introduction. I don't even have the name of it here. <coughs> Thank you. The committee is, becomes part of our committee contingent. So next month will be plenty of time to talk about it. 
in my opinion. And I think another suggestion too, we could do a proclamation at the next council meeting in March. Yeah. Yep. For the, for and even if we fun. and if we don't get the committee kind of in place, that's something you could if you really are passionate, work with Megan. Okay. And Megan can do a poster or whatever it is that you want to post and she could put that on social media and website. Well that environmental stewardship committee one of the components was linking with the communication committee and that's mm -hmm. where Megan's expertise comes in too. So Okay. Any other questions, comments? All those in favor of receiving the report signify by saying aye. 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 All those contrary minded. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. Uh, item 15, the CAO Treasurer's Report. So I'll, I'll turn it over to our CAO. Okay, so... Oh, sorry, I thought we were just going to receive it. My bad. So um, I won't go into details of my actual report that will be posted on our website. However, I want, I'm going to release this document as well as from a letter from the Treasurer to discuss our budget. So I will, I will read this so that people are aware in case they don't see it. So on January 23rd, operating fund budget had been approved by the Minister of Environment and Local Government. This year, the budget process was a challenging experience as we brought together the budgets for Hanwell and the local service district budgets of Kings Clare, Kings Oswald, and Ledford. For many municipalities and local government, an advisory transition committee was established to determine many decisions and budget requirements for the entities. In Hanwell, we were very fortunate as our community only had a by-election to appoint two new councillors for Ward 5 and 6, so our current council was able to have input into our 2023 operating fund budget. However, the minister gave the final approval. Excuse me. The advisory transition committee, as well as our current council, were very concerned about the assessment increases this year and wanted to ensure that our budget was very economical so that our residents wouldn't have a huge increase due to assessments and municipal tax rates. The province imposed five new mandated services for all of the entities, economic development, tourism, regional transportation, public safety, community development, social inclusion, regional and collaborative services, so tax rates will be affected. Below you will find the tax rates for 2023 and the impact on each entity compared to 2022. So for Hanwell, um, we have our municipal tax rate, then we have last year was our 17 cents that was for um, protective services and then you have your 41 cents for transportation costs. So I'm not talking in this right now about the 41 cents for transportation, that's a separate tax altogether. So. Um, for Hanwell, you will see a change from 2022 to this year of 0.417 cents. So it's down, the tax rate will be lowered 4 cents. So Hanwell, um, the areas that have street lights, you're going to see 0 0.0443, so 4 cents. Kings Clear Local Service Districts, um, Yours, it was 41.39 and it has gone up 5 cents, so 0 0.0519. Oswald Gray, theirs is going down 0 0.0274. And the Ludford subdivision, they are increasing um, 0 0.0238, so 2 cents. So I thought it would be easier if I kind of did like a question and answer um, and these are some of the questions that I have has been brought up to me so question I heard through social media that some places were spreading out a tax rate what does that mean 
With the municipal reform, we had the opportunity to spread the tax rate increases over a number of years, as there are many local governments that saw very high increases. However, under the direction of the advisory slash transition committee and council, it was decided that we would bite the bullet all in one year. So, with um, Kings Clear, where they increased five years, we had the opportunity to spread that five years over up to three years for a five year spread. But um, the advisory committee and stuff felt that we might as well just do it in one year and not have to kind of worry about it in case there's ever increases in the following year for whatever reason. Um, question, why aren't the tax rates all the same? There are a few services that some portions of our entity have and others don't. So. Street lights, there's only a portion of Hanwell and the Oswald Gray have lights. Recreation um, agreement, only Hanwell and the Ludford subdivision pay into the Fredericton Recreation Agreement. And I do have an update on that that I can give afterwards. Um, question, why did Oswald Gray's tax rate go down but the other two local service district rates went up? On the budget, we are required to bring forward the previous second year surplus or deficit. This year, Oswald Gray had a surplus from 2021 in the amount of $5,267. Based on their tax base, that's approximately seven cents on their rate so that was very beneficial for this year. So if they didn't have that, they probably would have had an increase. So question, I heard that the boundary lines were changing in Kingsclear, but yet the upper Kingsclear Fire Department is still going to cover those areas. Why should we pay for them? There is a portion of Kingsclear that was annexed to the rural community of Harvey. The rural community of Harvey will reimburse Hamwell for fire services to cover that area in the amount of $109,266. Question. In the table above, it shows the tax rate for services provided by the minister. What are these services and are there any other tax rates that we don't know about? So the minister looks after policing services, which includes administration costs. The cost averaged $0.17 cents in 2022, however, due to the province having large increases in the tax bases across the province, the cost for policing actually went down a little, so it is averaging between $0.15 and $0.16. Cents. On your property tax bill, you will find another tax rate of $0.41 cents for transportation, <coughs> DTI, for the roads because Hamill doesn't control your roads, ditches, etc. Question. I used to get my services from a certain contractor. Is that going to change this year now that we are all one entity? No. All contractors will remain the same for 2023 for snow removal, fire stations, community centers, garbage collection, and recycling. In the fall of 2023, these will all be put out to tender for the entire new entity. Um, question. I keep hearing about mandated services. What are they and how much did they cost? The province imposed five new mandated services for all entities to be delivered through the Capital Regional Service Commission, which was the former RSC 11. These include the following and made a difference of approximately one cent on the tax rate. So economic development is going to cost us $55,153, tourism $57,149, regional transportation, public safety $7,549, community development and social inclusion $3,297, regional and collaborative services $7,751. So, question. I suppose now that the LSDs are part of Hanwell, this means that we have to pay a lot for salaries that we didn't before. These are considered a shared cost. There will be two positions hired, one as Director of Recreation and Parks and an Assistant Clerk. 
Our previous clerk was appointed to the Chief Administrative Officer position, and the Assistant Clerk was appointed as the Clerk by the Minister. So another Assistant Clerk will need to be hired. A Recreation Director is needed so that we can utilize the Community Centre in Hanwell, as well as the one in Upper Kingsclear. We also have acquired ball fields, soccer fields, basketball courts, multi-purpose surfaces, and as well we are hoping to having an MOU finalized with the Hamwell Park Academy to utilize their facilities in the summer months. So hopefully in the near future we will be advertising um, many new programs for all of our residents of all ages. With the salaries for staff, current and future, the salary for council, the former and the two additional, and the cost for desks, chairs, travel, and training, it was under $50,000 increase from last year. So in summary, due to the increase in revenues, a large increase in the residential and non-residential tax base, and a very economical budget, we are pleased to present to you the 2023 operating budget. So I will put this on our website, um, tomorrow and then please feel free to share it with anybody. I'm just noticing um, and maybe I'm wrong. Oswald Gray? Yes. With the motion out and then do questions. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, Might as well. Let's... I think it's called G-R-E-Y. No, no. It's not the other one. G-R-E-Y. Okay. Can I get a motion to receive the uh, Move to receive report? the Letter from our CAO regarding Seconder. the operating fund budget summary. Okay. Seconder? I'll second. Okay. So now we'll open for questions, comments, concerns. Anybody else? Okay. No, I had Googled it and it said G R E Y. So but it's spelled G R E Y? Okay. It's spelled both ways depending on who's who you're talking to. They check it with uh, Oswald Gray spelled it G R A Y. Yes. Yeah. Our family wants it. In the family one, right? But I mean, yeah. I think it was the, 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 as the color itself. It's, it's, it's the same as Island View. Yeah. Yeah. It should right. be two separate words, not one. Oh. Well, Interesting. That's Great. local knowledge, right? Yeah. It does come in handy. It just, just like you do. <laughs> right. That really gets. <laughs> Just don't ever mistake make the mistake of calling Majorville Margerville. Oh, <laughs> that's a no-no. <laughs> okay, no questions. All those in favor of uh, receiving the CAO's uh, letter, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those contrary, mind. Motion carried. Thank you. And well done, CAO. So just a point of information was that was motion was re to receive the letter. Well, Should we do a separate one to receive the report or are we including the report with the letter? It, to me it was all, it's yeah. the, okay. the CAO treasurer's report. Yeah. I was getting concerned. Just double check. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, over on finished business, we have uh, no, any update, we don't have any updates on the rec building and the rural plan uh, progress reports. So I was speaking to Isabel after Isabel Ouellette after she did the presentation last month from RSC 11. Um, we thought that it would be best instead of her and I kind of meeting and then me giving you guys an update um, on the rural plan progress. She will provide to you an engagement process report each time. So she strongly recommended we had brought up the idea of um, the rural plan planning review. So she thought that it would be very beneficial for us to have this committee and to start it as soon as possible. So what she would really like to do is only have a couple of counselors sit on it as council if you want to sit on it as residents you can but really have quite a few people from the public because we want everybody's ideas and stuff brought forward for the amendments and stuff so um, she's going to be um, drafting a document and stuff so we will get it out there so as soon as we put it up please share it with your 
constituents so that we can um, get as many people as we can. And once again, we'll probably have a job description for all of those <laughs> <laughs> volunteers. <laughs> so um, that will be coming from her very soon. Okay, we're good. Do we need to receive it? Yeah. <coughs> um, I don't think so. It's just going to be part of. Yeah. Sure. Okay, moving on to 17 new business. Uh, Cold is not a theater sponsorship. Oh, I have to leave. Yes, we do. Okay. So I'll just give you guys, uh, you guys have read this anyway. Yes, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So everybody's well aware of the coldest night of the year and what the ask is. Mm -hmm. So uh, can I get a motion, please, for item A? Okay. I'll make a motion if you like. Yep. Uh, Where is Councillor Fox has organized a team with a goal of raising $7,500, whereas the Friesen Foxes have surpassed their goal and raised $7,651, where Councillor Fox himself has raised over 5200 I move that the council direct and authorizes the clerk to donate $500 to the John Howard Society for the Coldest of the Year campaign under the name of Councillor Tim Fox and his Freezing Fox's team. I'll second it. Okay, any discussion, questions? Um, who wrote this? <laughs> I mean, I'm fine with it. Yep. Uh, I thought he would be putting in for his sponsorship. Well, he is. He's, there's, the, there's going to be an ask in there in the motion, so I'm just going to have to read the motion. Just did. Just, we just did. did. Sorry, where, where was I? Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking of something else. This is a very worthwhile cause. Well, no, it's a very there's worthwhile no cause. It's a different process. In my opinion. Um, where the process of being a sponsor is where you get your name in the book and whatever, whatever. That's what I had suggested. When I, anyway, this is, it doesn't really matter where, where the money goes as yeah. long as. Yeah, but under the name Council Fox, doesn't that uh, work for that? That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that, that's fine. If you want to do it that way, I really. Um, oh, no sorry. To it. It's, it's just making a motion to donate to Councillor Fox's Freezing Foxes. Group. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm, I'm good with that. That isn't what we've got. The sponsorship was a good point. Yeah. Anyway. Yes. Okay. Any more questions? No. Nope. Okay. I didn't know Nobody told us that. I did, but I, but I had my call. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying no. Aye. Aye. All those contrary, mind. Motion carried. Thank okay. you. Anyway, you can visit each other, which way it goes. Okay, so, uh, 17B, application for funding for the CRAG, the Capital Region Association of Geocachers. Okay, so this was brought forward, I think it was uh, September or October. Um, they wanted us to sponsor them for the a big event that they are having for the geocachers. And... Because they were asking for a large amount of money, we do have a process on our website where organizations can um, ask for a sponsorship and then we can budget for it. So we knew that we were going to bring this forward. So when we did our budget for the donations, our previous budget was um, the $5,000 each year, and we did up it by the 3000 So, council can decide if they wanted to do the whole <coughs> amount or whatever. So, that is how this came forward. Can we suspend the rules um, so we can discuss, discuss. Sure. a little bit first? Yep. Good idea. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor suspending the rules, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those contrary, by motion carried. Thank you. Um, so I had a question. In the documentation that they sent out, um, I don't see it here. So it would have been on here um, in our package. I thought it said 2500 mm -hmm. um, rather than 3000 Because I noticed it said the city of Fredericton and they had City of Ormoc, Town of Ormocto. Mm -hmm. 
So it would be 2500 that they would be asking for, if I'm correct. Sorry, I, when we talked about that, the budget, like we weren't putting three in there for this. We were just upping our budget by three, and then you guys can donate. No, however, what was on the sheet that they sent in, the mega, is tw said 2500 So they're, I think that's their donation request, is all I'm saying, is $2,500. Um, my other question that I had with regard to them, they're having an event here on July the mm -hmm. 8th. They are. Are we charging them for the hall? They're renting, um, I think they're renting the space. It's a kitchen party. Yeah, so in the, in their, in the same thing right. that they sent us, it had $200, so I was assuming that was the rental cost. Is that what the it rental cost is? It was an expenditure. Yeah. Okay, $200. so I was, I guess my question is, is it possible to waive their fee and then do, uh, like, so that would be a d donation in kind, so to speak, mm -hmm. and then also do a donation? Yeah, that would be part of the donation if we waive the fees and whatever else we do. We could, we could just waive the fees. We could waive the fees right. and add three hundred dollars or whatever into it. Right. But that's that Is would that make something sense. Something that's doable. I don't see why not. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I just question that. Council talks. So this one, I found this one really yeah. interesting. <laughs> too. Um, this one turned me. The budget that was submitted, the expenses and the revenues. First off, they didn't balance. So. Their expenses were thirty-eight thousand, I think. Their revenues were forty-four thousand, but they didn't know if they were going to get ten thousand from the province, whether they could get this this year. So I was kind of confused because I, I, whenever I look at making donations when it's for an event and budgeted, you always want those lines to break even, right? Like, so you don't want them making money off of this and. And asking for a donation so that I thought was a little strange the second thing that I had a question for and you probably won't have the answer to but I noticed that they're asking for money from us and from the town of Oromocto but they're but they're only asking for an in-kind donation of three thousand dollars from the city of Fredericton which seemed odd to me since I think the most of the benefit of this is going to go to the city of Fredericton. So it seemed, that seemed just kind of strange and, and, and not that I'm against making a donation to them or a sponsorship to them, but I just thought it was, like I just didn't understand why the city of Fredericton wouldn't be kicking in with a dollar amount um, as well when I couldn't see what that in kind was for when I looked at their budget because usually that would show in the expense line and then right. it would be covered again under the revenue line as, as an in-kind to balance those off. Um, and the third thing that I bring up, and, and uh, again, I'm not sure who I'm asking this question to, um, this seems like a real tourism thing. Like, I'm why is this an RSC? thing that like should this be going through RSC to get oh, yeah. funding for this as opposed to as opposed to us because it feels like this is a real tourism and it's a joint one where all the communities right yeah, are benefiting from it aren't we paying uh, right fifty five thousand dollars or whatever to this fifty five thousand so fifty seven thousand dollars per year we're giving to the Capital Regional Service Commission tourism. Yeah, so those were all of my sort of questions on this. Observations, I guess, yes. and questions, yeah. Can yeah. I speak on that? Sure. So also don't forget that this year we have started collecting the accommodation tax levy mm -hmm. from the Radisson. Right. So with that, um, it's probably going to be in the range of seventy to $100,000 a year that we are supposed to use to promote tourism. Sure. With that revenue that we have received, um, we were thinking that that could go also to the, towards those fees. But just keep that, I didn't want you to forget that we do have that and it is for promoting tourism and stuff in Panama. <laughs> We have. Yes. Yeah, um, so I think uh, I didn't do the line item thing. Good catch. I would never have caught that if you paid me a million bucks or ten bucks. I would not have caught that either. Um, my thing was, how is this helping Hanwell 
and our citizens and tourism, are somebody out here getting money from this? Is it is it going to be some campsite? I saw Frederick all over the place, and our motto was like, well, of course that's where they're going to stay if they're coming from all over the place. The Radisson, maybe, maybe, but even then, it, it seemed like we weren't getting stuff from it. I actually, I have to, I never caught, thought about the RC11 uh, angle, from whatever it is called, uh, Entity 62 angle of whatever that thing is. Capital region. Capital region, whatever it is. It's a. Uh, I think that's a steep ask right now for me, and I don't understand what we're being asked for. Yeah, Friday is a, a paddle on the Wollastook. Now, whether that'll take place in the Kingsclear area, I, I would expect so. Probably, you know. And they're also having a uh, kitchen party in Hanwell, and I'm not that's sure here. what that consists of. So that's going to be here for them, but is it going to bring anybody else in from Hanwell? <coughs> Are handwall geocachers involved in it? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. yes they will be. Yes. It will, but so like if we go back to when we first talked to them about this in the recreation committee, it seemed like a great idea back then, but now it seems like the tourism aspect of it's really going everywhere else other than us. Like they made it out to be this big thing where they're gonna promote everybody's gonna be coming into Hanwell from all over the Maritimes and stuff like that and everybody get to see it, but it seems like we're really just a small speck on what actually is happening around here. And I, I agree with Councillor Sepp that I'm not really sure that I see any benefit to this anymore. Mm -hmm. I did back then because of the way that it was marketed to me and, and the committee. Now I don't really get it. I don't really see how this benefits us in any way. Well, except it's seven days in the area, exploring, dining and shopping, bike and scooter rentals and kayak rentals will be busy. Our guests will be encouraged to visit the Beaverbrook Art Gallery, our local markets and museums, and other cultural and historic locations. Kind of really pushes more, you know, certainly more towards Reddit than, than what uh, they're going to be doing in Hanwell, per se. But are they not actually doing the geocaching here? Yes, they are doing yeah. some. Yeah, here they're having yeah. a kitchen party here. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, people will be coming here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I still think we should be supporting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just got to think we've got to be careful on how much uh, we're doing for support. Because they're, they're doing something for us, but they seem to be doing a lot for the city, and you know, the city's giving them a donation in kind. So, when I looked at that report, I wasn't sure if the, those were final or they were proposed. Like, I don't know if the city's proposing to give them yeah. that money in kind. I don't know if Ormacto's actually <coughs> giving them that, or if they haven't even went to Ormacto and have gotten confirmation that they are giving them yeah. that amount of money. So there's a lot of questions. So maybe what we need to do is find out the answers to those questions and then bring it back. Because it's not happened to yeah, a lot. I don't want to say no, but... Yeah. Councilor Fox had a question. Did you have a question? Well, that was my uh, proposal that we ask for specific uh, um, mention in their plans or, or they could send us their plans with a specific focus on what they plan to do that would involve Hanwell. And I say that because we're spending taxpayers money and if we don't know why and how it benefits our area and it's a simple matter of them if there are Hanwell geocachers involved putting that in a letter to us. That seems to me to be a reasonable ask of the councillor this level. Or staying at Kingswood or stuff like that. All I mean, those, those benefits, I just one little camping paragraph at each point to July. Yeah, they, would there. justify our donation because yeah. I find it uh, being new, I don't know any of the background to their initial request. And it doesn't, it's not clear in the literature I have to consult. So I, that's a thing. So that sounds like a, I'd like the motion to postpone the discussion of this until next month's meeting, mm -hmm. and during that, between now and then, to have the clerk investigate the questions that were raised tonight with the CRAG group. I think we have a point of order. Okay. Um, what is it? So I was going to suggest that we we have a special meeting of council on the 28th. Right. So I was going to suggest that you guys email me the questions that email you would me like. The questions. Email, email the me the questions. <laughs> <laughs> email the clerk with your questions 
we can go out and add them and then we could put this on our meeting on the agenda on the 28th. Is it that time sensitive that it has to be the 28th? Oh, it's July. I know the event is July, but are they, it's okay if it uh, is. She they need actually money. emailed me yesterday wondering if a decision was made. Okay, so. then, so instead of the postponed, same motion, but well, let's change the date to the special meeting council rather than the March. Right. That seems right. Yeah. And I think we have time to uh, have the clerk investigate it between, between now and then, at least have some of our questions yeah. answered. We, so. need, we need but, a second. But I need the question. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we'll need the questions to be sent I'll to her. Thank you. Okay, so good for discussion? Yep, yeah, just make note that just to send all the questions about this then to the clerk. Okay, so all those in favor of the new motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those contrary motions. Great, motion carried. So. Like, like everybody said, get their questions to share or our clerk sooner rather than later. So it's a, it's going to be a quick response time, for sure. So motion to extend the meeting past 9 p.m. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those contrary, minded. Okay. Motion carried. We'll extend the extend the meeting past 9 p.m. <coughs> okay. Moving on to the. Handle days, I can see. So, uh, according to Councilor Highsmith, they discussed a bit about handle days, but nothing was decided at the Parks and Rec Committee. So here we are with uh, this is well, February is going to draw fast to a close, and handle days is in June, May 14th, 15th. No, 26th to 28th. 26th, 28th. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we want to get uh, an ad hoc committee for handle days together. We need somebody to organize it. I know uh, I volunteered to organize a golf tournament, so I'm going to start working on that. We had our first annual uh, Hamilton Days golf tournament last year, and for the first tournament, it was a pretty good turnout, and we did have a trophy, which we will award each year as we go on. So I'm certainly up for looking after that part. So do we have anybody to step up to uh, start the ball rolling on looking after Hamilton Days? Don't all speak at once. I'm away that whole weekend, so I can't even go to this year. Yeah. Can we take this back and uh, uh, decide in this coming couple of weeks? Well, we could we could have a decision. If, we, if somebody wants to step up, we could either get time to think about it, we could step up on the 28th. What's the history of Hanwell Days? How long has it been in existence? 2014? Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. the start of it. Yeah. It's yeah. basically to celebrate the inaugural day. That's why it's so early in the spring, too early because it's cold. Yeah. The last couple of years have been, due to, due to COVID, we haven't really done a whole lot. We had kind of a small celebration last year, but you know, hopefully with COVID behind us, uh, we can do a, a much larger or, uh, celebration this year. And the is bigger too. So and Hamel is bigger too, because obviously we've, uh, you know, we've uh, doubled in size geographically. So it's, a, it's certainly to encompass the whole of the area. We have to have, you know, again, things going on all over Hamilton, obviously. So it's, a, it's, it's quite a challenge to handle it, but it's very important too. It's the, you know, the biggest celebration we do put on. So it's, a, you know, we either, either do it and do a good job. So anyway, let's, uh, let's not let it fall off the radar. Let's uh, think on it between now and the 28th. And let's put it on the agenda. The 28th is growing, by the way, our, our special meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, I don't even have that one on my calendar. That was on. Was that calendar? on there? Because I thought I went through and put them all on, and yeah. I don't have it yeah. on my calendar. Yeah. That one was on because that's the auditor. Okay. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll yeah. double check on that. So unless I put her on some other date. Is it council's wishes to think about it a little bit further, or do we want to try to decide tonight, or what? No, what's, uh, what's your it's only, wish? It's only to be think on it. Okay, I have to just put off. I don't think we, there's no action needed at this nope. point, so no need for motion. Let's just start the discussion, I guess. <coughs> yep. Okay, so we'll bring it back for discussion on our special meeting on the 28th. Uh, can we add that on to the agenda? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. All righty. 
Item D, uh, we're looking at uh, vacation requests by council. And we're looking to have a motion for council acceptance request for leave. Uh, can, I'm sorry, can we suspend the rules again? Yes, I think we have to in this case, for sure. Thank you. A motion to, uh, can I Seconders. get a second here? Sorry. All right, uh, rules are now suspended. Okay. Um, my, I guess one of my biggest concerns with this one is um, due to privacy and security um, reasons, I really don't think we should know in a public meeting who and when that person will be away on vacation. Scheduled. Okay. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's scheduled, so I don't think we want to put that in a motion because then people know they're away from their house right. and that could be... Um, and dicey. the house sitter make it smooth. Just, yeah. So that's, that's one of my big issues okay. um, with that. Other than that, I think... I do believe it has to be discussed, I but maybe we put this to the uh, uh, it's a, it, I was actually going to let it go because it is a worthy conversation, what this is. But I'm also afraid my wife's going to find out. <laughs> and then she's going to be panicking somebody broke into her house. No, yeah, yeah. And yeah. All yeah. the stuff going on. Yeah. And no, he I, was going to be looking after our house. No, I don't think so. I, I didn't say that you were away. I said in, the motion. in the motion. In the motion. In the motion, you do. In March 2020, the regular meeting. That doesn't mean you're that away. That doesn't mean that you're away. It just means you're on vacation. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to go in semantics. Uh, so no group point order or whatever. Aren't we supposed to go through the chair? Yes. Yeah. We should try to maintain. maintain. Well, yeah, rules or anyway, yeah. but it is a worthy conversation. Yeah. I think it's a, it's righteous, but I think we could do this while we're talking about committee stuff and yeah. some policies. I think it's a, a worthy discussion to have. Uh, like <clears throat> what are to be considered valid excuses for That's missing right. a council meeting? Uh, you know whether. We've got all kinds of right. you know, what I'd call reasonable excuses, whether it be sickness, uh, you know, death in the family, you, know, you had a car accident, God forbid, on the way to a council meeting. But there is those are things that are out of councillor's control. Right. But on the on the side of uh, scheduled events, I mean, again, we know our, when our council meetings are, we've taken on the task of being a councillor. Right. So you know, we again, there's going to be things that do pop up. From time to time, that a, a councillor has to miss a council meeting with, you know, again with circumstances beyond their control. But uh, we do have provisions in our bylaw too that a person can miss up to 20% without a valid excuse. So, like I said, if you, whatever for whatever reason you you have to be away from a council meeting and it's not a valid excuse, it really has has no effect but puts puts you on right. that you have one council meeting gone that you didn't have a valid excuse to be absent for. Right, but vacation. To me, at least, would be a valid excuse. So that, like, that we wouldn't be fair to lose one of those days for something that really is. And in this particular case, my vacation was. I was supposed to be here back, but Sunwing cancels my flight. So now I have to leave a whole different time and head all the way down to Halifax, and, and it's a whole thing. I yeah, you, here. you were saying, like you said, you couldn't very well phone in if you were at the airport, right? Because that's another way we have of attending the council meeting is, is electronic. Right, but there'll be people in the car when I'm coming back, unfortunately, now, because yeah. the flight. So, right. so this, this, this kind of, I didn't plan around, I actually planned around not missing council session. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Councillor Jonah has comments. Why are we discussing this to begin with? We've, ever since 2014, people have come, people have gone, people have had vacation. We've never, ever had to make a motion for someone to take vacation. This is usually something that's done by the clerk, they book it, you know. Yeah. Well, the, the question comes up is, is it a valid excuse or not to miss a council meeting? And that has to be approved by council. But we've never ever done that in the past. We've never had, the opportunity never arose, so mm, we're... People it, take vacation every year. But do you miss council meetings when you're on vacation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd be kind of happy to be here too. But we don't have a policy, guys. I actually think it's still a legitimate exercise. I just don't think we have to decide. Well, we have the policy just reads that if it's a, a, a legitimate excuse approved right. by council. Uh, so that's it's open a good exercise. Because, you know, but because once you do have those things approved, then you're open ended for anybody taking a vacation anytime and miss as many council meetings as they wanted because they're on vacation. Now, not saying that anybody would do that, but it, it could lead to abuse. Yeah. But isn't the valid, ex you still have the caveat that they can't miss any more than 20%? Unless it's a valid excuse. Unless, Unless it's a valid excuse. Right. Okay. So that's where we've got to be, you know, extremely careful because if you, it's a slippery slope yeah. where somebody may say, oh, I'm on vacation next week, I'm on vacation yeah. next month, yeah. I'm on vacation yeah. the month after that. When you retire, there's a lot of vacation. And if you allow 
And that's just one example. It, it, could, be, it could be abused. That's but I do it. like the idea of it being approved by the mayor. You know, yes, okay, yeah, yeah. you would have one. But, but the, come on, this is your third time, sign. So yeah, it just, it, it just reads approved by council, right? Which right. is not the mayor, it's council well, that makes the decision. Well, the mayor would be fine for me, but whatever. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, again, this is something that's going to be the discussion, like, is being on vacation a valid excuse for missing a council meeting? And are there other excuses for missing a council meeting that would be considered valid? <coughs> it's good to know these things at a time if we have something in there that we can draw on. Because again, if something comes up and it's I would like something to new, to and that's meeting. going to happen from time to time, that they're going to have a reason for missing a council meeting. And it, it may be a valid excuse, but council's going to have to vote on it, whether it's a valid excuse or not. So this sounds like another thing to bring up in the committee discussion night. Right. Basically. This should go to the governance committee. I think we should add it to policy. I think it's a righteous conversation to have. And oh, definitely. It should be documented. Yeah. Um, I just don't think we need to do a motion tonight on it. No. No, I agree. But I think it's something Great. that that's a, it's a worthwhile discussion to have. So let's think about it and uh, bring your ideas for next week at the, com at the committee meeting. Right? Mm -hmm. okay. Fair enough. Another addition? <laughs> that's the committee one, though. That's not for the special meeting. Oh, okay. That's the committee okay, that's the committee meeting. Meeting. okay, great. Okay. Oh, yes, E is the committee liaison, or the community liaison committee. Um. And that is where, if. This is to do with the uh, <coughs> the committee that sets up with the uh, Matt the Crack Dam, and we're involved in that. So if uh, Councilor Pack wants to speak on that, just to <coughs> inform the group of what it is, I'll turn the floor over to her. In 2014, the uh, NB Power Corporation, in its long-term planning for refurbishment of the Matt the Crack Dam, developed a community liaison committee, uh, which uh, can have no, few, no more than 17 members. A uh, number of them are emergency measures experts and staffers of NB Power. The rest are all community members. Uh, the intention is for a quarterly meeting of the committee during which time NB Power updates the entire committee and particularly the community volunteers on the status of hydroelectric generation in the lower St. John River, particularly at Mactaquac Dam, but also the Tobit Dam, the Beechwood Dam, etc. There has always been a roundtable session at each meeting for community members to update the committee on concerns that have taken, um, taken to the committee member, the community members, uh, to pass on to Andy Power. And the current status of the construction work over the dam has been influenced by community members. For a time, NB Power's plan was to close the dam completely for a year, if not longer, for the refurbishment work in conjunction with DTI. And the committee members from the community were very influential in getting that changed. Some folks don't like sitting at the traffic lights on the dam, but it sure is better than having it closed completely. Oh, <laughs> terrible, the distance that would have to be traveled, as well as the emergency measures, mutual aid agreements would be impacted greatly. There were many concerns by Head Pond residents about water level fluctuation in the Head Pond without any communication with residents. And this community liaison committee, mostly at the instigation of the committee members who are community members, got that changed. So now NB Power always advises the public on its website when there's to be a water level change. And we get reports about spring freshets. We get it. It's a very, very good committee. And now that wards five and six are in Hanwell, 
uh, we'll have representation there. I've been on it for 10 years, so I will do my best for you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Peck. So can I get a motion? I move to appoint Councillor Debbie Peck to represent Hanwell on the NB Power Lower St. John Wollastic Hydro Community Liaison Committee to be referred to as the Community Li Liaison Committee and a quarterly report brought forward to Council. I'll second. Okay. I have a point of order question. Can we appoint or can we nominate? Because I don't think we, we can appoint. We can appoint. We? We can appoint. Yeah, we have uh, authority over this. No. This organization. No, all we're doing is point her as a rep. Yeah, so they want her on, on behalf of council. She's already on the committee. Okay. We're just appointing her as the representative for council. Okay. The point seems like we have authority over this committee, but if this no, is what just, is good, yeah. they just need they just want somebody from the community to sit on the committee. So, okay. so if they yeah. ask us, oh, there was a request. I just look here. Okay, any other questions, concerns? All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those contrary, man. <coughs> Motion carried, thank you. All right, item F, <coughs> recreation director. I'll turn that over to our CAO for <coughs> to speak on that. Okay, so we have been wanting a recreation director for quite a long time. Um, but we were holding out even last year. There, we had heard about a grant that was available, and so we were waiting for that to happen. So it has happened, <laughs> and they need a letter from a council meeting approving that we are... Um, Sorry, I can't even think. Um, that we are able, that you guys want to have a recreation um, director, and that after we apply for this grant, and um, if the grant funds finish after four years, then we will continue with this position. So we've already, it is already a budgeted item, and so I just need council's motion that you do agree that we can put in a, a recreation position and I took I think five um, job descriptions and stuff from neighboring municipalities <coughs> and I've compiled one to say what the job descriptions could be like so this is something that we can change and add or whatever, but it was just something so that we can bring it forward. <coughs> so this is just applying for the grant, basically? Yeah. This is operational as far as I'm concerned. I don't think it, it really bothers us. Well, they, they want we have to a motion from council. I move to authorize and direct the clerk to apply for the professional recreational leadership assistance through the Department of Tourism, Heritage, and Culture and agree that we will continue to support this position upon the conclusion of the department's assistance. I'll second that. Okay. One quick question. The, the salary range listed for this, I thought we were not going to lowball. We're, we're looking for an MBA as an asset, and we're only offering a maximum of $58,000 per year. That seems pretty low to me. But again, this is the motion just to apply for the grant? The rest is operational. There's nothing. Yeah, well, it, it, it won't be operational though when it comes back to budget because we will have to eventually budget for this. And I don't think you're going to get anybody with an MBA of 58000 When we want to continue the position after the grant ends, we'll be paying for whatever it is. And it should be, quite frankly, a lot more than that. Yeah, again, this motion is just to apply. Yeah, this is the apply that motion. Okay, so it's, it's long because it's, it's listed in the documentation. That's all. No, yeah, so this is just the this is just the job <coughs> description, so that you guys knew what I was kind of thinking for. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This, this hasn't had, that document hasn't had any input from council as of yet. Okay. But like uh, Councilor Sefton said, it's purely operational anyway. So, but anyway, this particular motion is uh, because they requested that. We need a motion from council to be able to apply for this grant for four years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, understood. It just, makes sense. It, it just eventually, I'm thinking ahead, it, it won't be operational eventually. We're going to have to pay for it. Have to pay for it. Because we're saying here, specifically in the motion, that we will continue to support this position upon conclusion. Right. So, 
we're going to have budget for it, so it's more of an operational at that point. So just just a heads up, I suppose. Just be yeah. Better. So sorry, Kelsey. Kelsey, um, that would be like any salary. Like I could say that my salary is forty thousand dollars, but right. that doesn't mean that ten years down the road my salary is going to be forty thousand dollars because. Fair we point. would budget every year. So yeah. Yeah. they're just saying that we will keep this position. Wherever it ends up being. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? All those in favor signify by mind saying aye. 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 All those contrary minded. Motion carried. Thank you. Now, item G is about our respect and the bonding of officers, employees, uh, reading by title. I will move that uh, the amendment to bylaw 06 2014 and bylaw respecting the bonding of the officers' employees be given its first reading by title. So second. second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those contrary minded? Motion carried. Bylaw 06 2014 and bylaw respecting the bonding of officers and employees. Thank you, Councillor McKenzie. Okay, uh, item H is bi weekly council uh, meetings versus management meetings versus uh, council meetings. We postpone this to the uh, committee meeting. It's going to be a long night. Yeah, yeah. We're, getting a, we're building up our uh, agenda for the committee meeting. I think this is only the second thing we added to the committee. We added up the 28th one. Yeah, there's already a long list from the governance committee stuff that we need to review that night. That's why we wanted to do it with all the council, right? There's a whole bunch of these little things like um, titles and stuff like that that we get. Yeah. Well, let's, let's follow through anyway. Uh, our CAA is going to speak on this, so then we'll be a little more informed of what direction we're, what we're direction we're looking for from council. Mm -hmm. So if, if uh, uh, Taylor wants to speak on this, then she, she certainly can. Okay, so um, we have talked a few times. I, as you know, previously we had an administration um, session, which that was more or less a staff meeting. I would provide you with everything that was happening in my office. And anything that was needed, that you needed to have information for, for the council meeting, I would bring that forward. We didn't debate or make motions at this meeting. It was um, open to the public if anybody wanted to attend. So I thought um, at the beginning of the year that instead of us doing that, that I would do my CAO report and it would still be a kind of a living document and it would be on the website and members of the public would know. However, I've had a couple of concerns brought forward that they, people weren't sure if they felt they did. They were missing on the administration committee. So, would you, in our training, um, we were told about the management committee, where managers could have a committee with council to discuss various things. Which, to me, when I heard him speaking, it was more or less the meeting that I was having with you guys. So. Other municipalities, um, they have what is called council and committee, the CIC. So some municipalities, if their council meeting is at 7 o'clock, they would meet at 6 o'clock. Do their CIC meeting, that's where your motions are, are drafted and everything. We usually have such a huge agenda that I don't know if we could, if having a meeting at 6 o'clock, that we could get all of our motions and stuff drafted. So I don't think that that's kind of an option for us. Other municipalities, they have um, their CIC meeting the week before. So everything that is going to go on the agenda is discussed like at that CIC meeting. So it's almost like two council meetings. Nothing is brought forward for their council. So typically we bring everything forward for the third week. We would have to do it the second week, and you guys would kind of review everything then. 
and then we would have our council. So a lot of like their CIC meeting is quite long. Their council meeting itself is just boom, boom, boom. <coughs> You're just going through because you've already made your motions. You are already aware. You've already done the discussions and stuff in CIC, which is also open to the public. And then when you have your council meeting, it's more or less just approving all of these motions and stuff. So it, this can be something that we wait on and decide. If you feel that you're getting enough information from my CAO report brought forward, or if you want to have another meeting, if you would rather me do a management meeting, kind of like we were doing before, or if you'd like to have an actual like two council meetings per month type of thing. Yeah, I think like uh, I know Councillor Heislip had said before, we're with not having any meeting before our council meeting, sometimes we're going into these meetings feeling misinformed and it's difficult for us to make a decision without tabling this and tabling that and whatnot. So I think we need, you know, a, a meeting like we had before, I don't care what we call it, but I think we have to have a meeting of council to get information on and, you know, inform our motions of what we're going to do so everybody's informed of what's going on. Councillor McKenzie. Yeah, like, for example, tonight we suspended the rules twice. It should be exceptional circumstances mm -hmm. that you do that. And, but without having any prior discussion or knowledge really of the events or being able to talk about it, we really had to. Right, so yeah, we li I'd like to see us get out of that and get back to doing more formality if possible. Um, okay, Councilor Heisler. So I'm just wondering if, like, the counseling committee to me, I don't think is going to work because we do usually have big agenda packages. So I don't think meeting an hour before is going to work. I no. really don't think even a couple of days before is going to work because really we need to have our agenda package at least a week before so we can go through it and we can become informed before we're making motions and and uh, all of that stuff. I'm wondering though, um, I noticed in Tantramar what they do is they have committees of the whole is what they call it. It's open to the public. They just, I'm not sure why they call it that particular, but but they serve as information meetings, mm -hmm. and it's on all kinds of subjects, and sometimes it's the first time that that council is actually discussing that subject, so it might be the first time that it's on there. Um, they also, though, which is I think is kind of cool, is they allow presentations at that meeting, so that, for example, if somebody has an issue with filling in the pond, they would have made the presentation at that meeting. Council would have a week to digest that information before it comes to council, which may or may not change the way votes go. But it's it's probably a good idea because if they give it at our regular council meeting, then we don't really have time to think. Then, about you, have it, it then you have to take it. So. Right. So yeah. So it makes sense that way. No decision, like they don't make decisions at that, no. and they're all open to the public. But I'm wondering if we can somehow maybe combine the management one with something like So that's the still CSU. kind of what we were doing before. So when I had the information session, administration session, we've changed the name on it a couple of times. If you recall, we brought in the Regional Service Commission to talk to us on different things. So at our special meeting of council, I have a presentation coming um, by the Capital Regional District to review information for the storage building with you. But that would have been the same thing. So. Now that's going to be on that committee or on that council meeting, whereas it could have, they could have come and you could have had more of a open discussion with them, but still no decisions are made. So I really, as time consuming as they were for myself to make keep that living document going, 
it's so beneficial, I found, to look back and say, okay, well, you know, we discussed this on this date or whatever, because a lot of, like, if things are verbal, I'm getting old, so I don't always remember things. So I, I found that that it wasn't like a, a meeting that was minutes and stuff, because it doesn't have to be. It is just a meeting, more or less a staff meeting kind of thing. So I'm bringing information, we can have presentations, whatever. So It's basically a roundtable committee meeting with staff is really what it ends up being. So it's still semi-formal. There's yeah. no minutes with it, that but there's, welcome the public's welcome to see it, yeah. welcome to go there, like anything else, but it's more of like a round table, I guess would be the way I, I, I see personally, because it's not quite functioned like a, a council meeting is, or a committee meeting, you know, it's... A little more informal. It's a little more informal, yeah, so... Okay, Councilor Second had a point? Yeah, uh, so, no, journey yeah. around, good job. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to demand CIC uh, the week prior, but I kind of like that idea that that is when presentations happen. The exception should be during council, because I don't have enough time. When people are speaking, like, man, I love that idea, but I have to research, <laughs> uh, even though that it's very good. And so I love that idea. I think that should be part of it. Second, if we're going to do, if we do it kind of the way Council High School, and you're kind of speaking about kind of the informal thing, doing what you've done before, the only thing I'd ask is we don't read everything that bloody thing. We call out what we want of that list. What do we want to talk about? Don't go through the list. Mm -hmm. So if uh, Deputy Mayor wants to talk about this, we'll let you know this is what we're going to talk about today because it's on her list. and uh, That way it frees up time for us to speak about our stuff. Because many times, at 10 o'clock, I couldn't speak about what I had on my list because we never got down to the There's 50 things on the list. Right. Yeah. Went through, even though it's the same it's thing. It's our job month. to read at home. I'd argue if we're going to do that, that's going to speed it up. Let us read at home. Let us study. If we have questions in, I promise you I'll ask during that meeting. But let's try to leave about 20 minutes for presentations as well. Mm -hmm. And then speed the bloody thing up if, if it's okay. It's great so another municipality that I worked for, we actually, we found that we were always going past 9 o'clock. So we actually started having bi-weekly council meetings. They were short. What didn't fit on one of those two... I don't like that idea at all. Was on <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> because then we're forced to go there, and by the way, then you have to make so many more attendances. <laughs> That's right. I personally really miss the admin sessions. Yep. I really do. I felt that they were very productive. We had great discussion. Um, it was where we could bring issues up. I, I really do feel that it's something that I would like to see continue. I would too. Yeah, I'm okay. I think we have a consensus. Well, uh, well, we'll see. Uh, what's council want? I'm for the. Uh, okay, we'll start with we'll start with the council second. Council so, Gendy. I'm like I'm like council second. I'm, I'm for going back to the management session yeah. and allowing presentations with it. Like but allow a presentation. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Councilor Coast. Same with yeah. Council Beck. So, are we talking about a week in between or two weeks? Previ previous week. Week. Previous week. The week before. Yeah. Oh, I'm in favor of that. Okay. Captain Jonah. I'm oh, sorry, Deputy Mayor Jonah. My apologies. I'm happy with what we're doing now. Okay. Uh, Councilor Heisler. Oh, I'm agreeing with Councilor Septon, Councilor McKenzie, Councilor Rose, Councilor Peck. And probably Councilor Fox. As am I. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Okay, so I think that's a, 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 a way we'll go. Okay, so we don't need a, a motion. No, that's no. just oh, um, myself kind of thing. Yep. However, do you still want me to do that CAO report or just do the treasurer's report? Treasurer's report should be fine, I would think. Again, what does council desire? Because anything is kind of coming forward, it might be a while before they come forward. So say if we, I found out information about a painter came by and said, hey Terry, I would like to paint the church. I could tell you that, but that's not something that I need to kind of put on a council no, right. meeting kind of thing. So do you want my CAO report? I, I still like the report too. I can't, yeah. If it's not a, a ton of extra work for you to do that, can we do that as well as the manager? We need it for the public anyway. Yeah. I mean, it would be nice. Yeah. Okay. Agreed. But again, we haul out the information we want to talk about during this report. It's right. theirs and writings. We can read. Okay. 
Okay, we're good. I think that's uh, I think that's a good we decision. We have presentation, so this will take some work on your phones. We have to start letting people know you can do presentations on this thing. It's going to take some. Well, sure, the presentations yeah, we, we request, so I don't know. But this would be a good time to let people have you have a presentation. I mean, I think the public. But they might like to sooner make presentations at a council meeting. It could be an option. Yeah. No, sure, yeah. yeah. I think it's optional. But I think we should let the public know. Yeah, because even, even uh, I think at night, the first time we met with them, they were going to do a presentation on the recommendation session, and they asked to do it at the council meeting. Because so. mm -hmm. yeah. don't forget, it's, it's more informal and there's no minutes kept. Right. So I think if we're going to have presentations, we'd want that entered into the minutes. Just, just my opinion. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay, or item I. Disposal of office furniture. Okay, so I was talking to our auditor today. I do not need a motion from council. However, our chairs that we previously had here, the new municipality in Sudbury, York, Sudbury, Sudbury York. York, the Rush of Gornish, Beaver Dam. <laughs> I can't get all these what, Central York or something. We just no, talked no, about not Central, Central York. York. It's um, Sudbury. Yeah. Okay. Except York. Anyway, so they obviously have nothing because they're starting out. They are interested in buying our chairs. Um, I think they only wanted like possibly six of them. So I talked to um, Covey's. We when we bought these, they were like one hundred forty nine dollars or something. So I was thinking like fifty dollars a chair. And I think the rest of them, or would you like to put them in Island View? Because if we ever have offices there, we need to expand. We could put them there. There's also our desks and filing cabinets. Um, from what I have gathered, our very first clerk back in 2014 <laughs> bought them at a government oh. surplus thing for a dollar yeah. or something like yeah. that yeah. so we but they are in actually really good shape so I they are looking on um, the Sudbury York they are looking for desks if we were interested in selling those or once again if you would rather keep them and we can put them in Island View just in case we need a future person. Yeah. I would think, I believe, if I'm, uh, Holly can probably correct me if I'm wrong, were those chairs got at a liquidation center or whatnot? They were no, the chairs they were not, the, not, not, the, not the, the, the council chairs. chairs. The old, the old, uh, there was the old beige <laughs> ones, whatever? The old no. metal chairs. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. I knew yeah. you got some chairs for yeah. all. So there was the chairs, there was tables. Yeah. I think it would be a, uh, a meaningful donation coming from yeah, Manuel a letter from the to mayor. help help out a new uh, entity. With a letter from the mayor. If you want to keep the, the yellow ones, the old ones of these, I think mean, that's they're probably worth, more worthwhile to keep if you want. To, yeah. you might need them. Well, the other ones are hard to put a council chain like a council desk because you'd want all your chairs to be the same, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Like for their council chambers, yeah. so I think we should give them to. I just yeah. give them yeah. whatever. My point is, it costs more to store furniture than it does to rebuy it. Because yeah. uh, you can buy used furniture anywhere. I'm telling you how many offices I was able to just grab chairs from. Yeah. We're only talking six, seven chairs with a letter from the mayor and compliments. I suggest we give it to them. I think it would be a nice gesture for I us agree. to give them. If you looked at our book, <coughs> they'd be. And a lot of people did us favor to know about it too. That's right. right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, yeah. I think they've served as well. I agree. Okay. With a letter from the mayor, though. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. So, <clears throat> upcoming activities. Uh, Zoomers February 21st. CMO February 21st. Zoomers February 13th. Zoomers February 28th. Special meeting of council February 28th at 7 p.m. Zoomers March the 2nd. Zoomers March the 7th. Zoomers March the 9th. Zoomers March the 14th. Parks and Recreation meeting March the 14th at 7 p.m. Uh, next council meeting, March the 15th at 7 p.m. That's our regular council meeting. And we don't have a closed session, so I already announced the date and time of our next uh, meeting, which is March the 15th. Move so to adjourn. Second? Second. Second. Meeting adjourned.